How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly here, and we may or may not have a guest in half an hour. We are scheduled to have Ken Shamrock, but that will be... We will either have him or we won't, and I guess we'll find out when the time comes. Brian, how are you today? I'm doing good. That's good. I guess uh, we can start off by talking about last night's Raw. Uh, a couple of interesting things on the show. It seems, looking at the ratings, that... Uh, whatever bump they got for no longer being Nitro, uh, you know, going unopposed, um, is just about gone. They're still a little bit ahead of what their average was uh, going against Nitro, but the number of new viewers they picked up with the exclusion of Nitro, um, you know, they the first week, uh, which was also the week after WrestleMania, the viewership, uh, you know, they were up a full point over what they had been doing. Last week they dropped a little bit, but they also had a, you know, the, a lot on the on a lot of McMahon family soap opera. This week they had very little McMahon family soap opera. They went to a wrestling show. Uh, there's been virtually no mention. Not, not, I mean, there's been like that. Those little basically the only mention of WCW is those cameos by Shane McMahon. And it seems like um, if they were going to get like a lot of the, the existing WCW audience to watch that had not been watching Raw already to switch to Raw now that there's no longer Nitro, um, the numbers are very very small, which I don't know what that means for the WWF version of Nitro or whatever the show will be called in a couple of weeks, starting on, uh, I guess, June the 9th, or what it doesn't mean, but uh, probably, it's not. I wouldn't call it a good sign. No, maybe that soap opera last week drove them off. Uh, well, that, you know, they did have two bad bras in a row, so you're right mm -hmm. about that. Uh, I, I thought the string ended. I don't know, Brian, what did you think about the show last night? I thought, um, should we start talking about Jeff Hardy first or just kind of save it? They have a lot to talk about. Uh, no, start with I Jeff guess, Hardy I think first. in the show in general, I mean, there was one point during the show where I thought, this is a damn great Raw, because they had Jericho and Angle, and then they immediately Excellent had match. Benoit and Regal, and it was just great wrestling, just real great wrestling. And I thought, man, you know, this is so good, got the main event to look forward to. And it was like throughout the show, they kept bringing up Hunter's speech on Heat, where he said that Jeff Hardy's win was a fluke. And the announcers kept talking about it, you know, is this a fluke, is this not a fluke, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, you know, I hope that at the end of the show, even if Jeff Hardy does not win this match and Hunter gets the belt back, I hope that they do something to prove that it was not actually a fluke. And when the show ended, they not only did nothing to prove that it was not a fluke, but they totally buried the Hardys and set up the main event for the next show, the Hunter and Austin versus Kane and Undertaker match. And I thought, they just... uh I don't want to say that they killed the kid, but, man, that match, it was just Hunter just destroying him, gave him a little comeback there at the end, beat him clean with the pedigree, which they missed, which was straight out of WCW, and just built up for the pay-per-view and left these guys laying with chair shots, and I just thought it was such a horrible finish for the show as far as booking, and uh, I don't know. And another match that I just don't want to see for the pay-per-view. Oh, what, that main event? Yep. Well, if you don't want to see it, and other people don't want to see that specific match, it doesn't bode well for the pay-per-view because that's the selling point. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the match that they're, you know, using to sell, you know, basically the one that they feel is going to do whatever business this show does. Um, I mean, it was so thing, clear that they're booking pretty much week for week because you could tell that, like, they had a long-term idea, and that was this tag match. And just somehow they decided, hey, let's uh, let's give Jeff Hardy this title, see what we can do with it. And they ended up doing absolutely nothing with it. And it was just something that happened. And I think, you know, a month down the road, I don't want to say that nobody's going to remember it, but certainly nobody's going to care. Well, a lot, again, it, it, you know, like I was saying yesterday, I'm more concerned with the follow-up than what they actually did last night. Now, watching that show, I, I, I got to tell you, th because they pushed so hard, I mean, they just, they spent, you know, usually they'll spend the whole show uh, wanting you to think something and then do something different. And this whole show, all they kept doing was trying to tell you that Jeff has no chance with Hunter. Hunter's going to kill Jeff, you know. And, you know, the thing was a fluke. And then the match starts, and Hunter is just treating him like a jobber, the, the whole match, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, like, it's very, very clear to me that Hunter has to lose because there's no way they're pushing so hard that he's not even going to be competitive and then not letting him be competitive. And when he won, 
And the camera missed it. I mean, because the camera's focusing on something else. I'm going, okay, here's where this happens and this happens. And the way uh, with Austin and Matt, uh, I mean, the way Austin, the Austin thing came in, I figured, you know, Austin's going to get Hunter DQ'd, so Jeff's going to sneak over and he'll keep the belt. You know, just like, and, and that would tease the Hunter Austin thing for down the road. Um, you know, that's how I was seeing it when I saw Austin show up. It's like, oh my God, you know, Hunter told him to go home. He stayed, and now he's going to screw up and, and cost a DQ, you know, or even cost a pinfall. And then all of a sudden, ding, 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 the bell rings, and I'm going like, well, what the hell was that? And, and then you pinfall, so in the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh my God. I thought it was some Jeff went over. I thought Jeff just won, but they weren't going to show it to us to make it more of a fluke, right? And then it's like, the, you know, Hunter won with a pedigree, and that was it. And I was just like, I mean, uh, well. What a burial. And then the thing afterwards, which was just, you know, they, they turned into be, I mean, you know, well, the way they were buried, I was thinking it was like, God, it's like Air Paris and AJ Styles being buried so the main eventers can do a run in, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, boy. Um, so yeah. I mean, as, I was, as far as follow up, I mean, just look at the follow up immediately after the bell rang, you know? Jeff, Jeff pretty much gets squashed. I mean, he, he had a comeback in there, but it was really nothing. Does the job to the guy's finish, and then right after the bell rings, they just, not only, not only that, but Hunter survived. them out with chair shots. But not only that, he survived. Hunter survived the dreaded belt shot, which is that finish that they always use. Yep. But the thing shot also. The post. I, yeah, yeah, and the shot. Yeah, the other one that really surprised me. There's a lot of stuff on that show. Was Matt beats up Austin, okay? Which is just so unheard of for them to do it. So I go, okay, they're going to either add, you know, and I had heard that they were talking about adding Matt versus Austin to the show, which they didn't do. So I'm figuring, okay, they're going to put Matt against Austin as the main event on SmackDown. But Austin has already beaten him, you know, it's like, and they may, which very well may be, may be the main event on tonight's SmackDown show, but the point is, it's like they went off the air with, you know, Matt, Matt was treated as bad as Jeff. He was lying there, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, he ran in there to make a save, and a lot of good he did. Um, so, I mean, that was w, that was WCW on how to build a baby face right there, let me tell you, when I was watching that. Um, but, I mean, aside from that, I, I personally liked Raw a lot more than the last couple of weeks, and I'm part of it, I think... Jericho and Angle, I thought, was a tremendous match. Mm -hmm. And uh, Regal and uh, Regal and Benoit, I thought, was a good match. And I thought Edge and Christian and the Hollies was a good match. Um, pretty much, I mean, except for Kane and Steve Richards, was that was kind of a waste. I mean, they did what they wanted to do, but I yeah. thought that wasn't really all that good. You know, and obviously Big Show and Kai and Tai, I mean, it's it's Big Show and Kai and Tai. I mean, it was exactly what everyone knew it would be anyway, other than, other than that interview that Mr. Show did, which was... Yes. Back oh. to Ohio Valley for Mr. Show. Oh, good lord! I, I I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it. And then you know what? I thought Paul Heyman made it worse. You know when he came back and tried to like explain what was being bleeped out. For those of you who did not watch the show, goof over and over again. Yeah. For, for what happened was a uh, Big Show was doing an interview on live TV and he made a racial comment about Japanese, and everybody just kind of went on their business. It was bleeped off. And then late in the show, I guess that, you know, somebody panicked and just goes, oh, my God, you were going to get some heat over this. And Paul Heyman, or I don't think he did it on his own. He may have done it on his own. Paul Heyman just goes, the, well, the word he said, like everybody, unless, you know, the word he said was goof. G-O-O-F. He said goof. He said goof. And I was like, oh, God. You know, now, you, now you've really done it this time. Now, now you're reminding Now everyone everybody. knows what he said. Yep. Oh, well. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously it was... You know, it, I this actually was not... rewound it and watched it again, and I thought the most amazing thing of all is Shane McMahon just looking this guy dead in the face. And Big Show says blinking. it, and Shane does not even register, you know? He's like totally, he's in this character, he's on TV, and it's like he doesn't even sell it, even for an instant, and the thing just goes on. Yeah, um, that was, got a lot of feedback to that to that word <laughs> yes. it's pretty clear it's pretty clear that um, that was not something that was scripted for him to say and the company clearly by, based on Heyman's reaction was embarrassed that he said it and Mr. Show just was not thinking before talking which is okay because that happens to me all the time too although maybe I think a little bit more maybe. Uh, than, than, than that <laughs> to say something like that um, the other one uh, boy, speaking, speaking of having nothing to say I do like Trish Stratus in WF New York you know, I watched about uh, 10 seconds of that, and then I realized that she had absolutely nothing of value to say. Fast forwarded to the very end and just got her uh, closing remarks. What she learned from this story, that she was really nice. But naughty. She was nice, but naughty. And uh, I thought, wow, that girl, so much for her career. Well, the other thing about her is, is she's out there, and she's so nervous. Mm-hmm. 
And so that made it worse. The fact that they had nothing for well, her to say. Just, the whole thing is like, you know, this poor girl has been treated like such a goof. And, uh, you know, they end up giving her a revenge, which is one slap. That's her revenge. And, and then they have no, come out they, and try to pretend like, you know, she's learned something, that Mr. McMahon is this evil man. And she's given these lines to read that are just so ridiculous that no, no girl in their right mind would ever say these things. And she has to go out there and say them on national TV for all these people at WWF New York. And it's just like, you know, how can you even say this with a straight face? Well, she couldn't. I mean, that was the problem. She was out there. She couldn't deliver those lines at all. So and it only made, it only made, now, now what do they do with her? Well, I think that that was pretty clear, is that they had no idea what they were going to do with her. The whole thing, as we said from the beginning, was for Linda to get revenge, and she just happened to be there. And now I think because of the controversy that some of the angles caused, they feel some sort of an obligation to do something, but they have no idea yet what that is. Mm -hmm. as, as what last, that's what, what last night seemed to be to me. But, um, you know, they, they uh, put Jer Jericho and Benoit together. Um, you know, for the Angle Regal thing, I'm presuming they're still doing a tag match. Although I heard that they're they're uh, going to be talking more about the undercard. Uh, they were going to do more discussion today about the undercard. So I don't know exactly if that's still a tag match. It was a tag match a week ago, and I mean, it certainly looks like that's what they would do. And if nothing else, that's a good pay-per-view match. And I, I, the other thing is, is that uh, uh, for those people in the UK, um, there looks like at least the mid card of that insurrection pay per view because they're going to have rematches Jericho and Angle and Benoit and Regal both matches which will be probably given you know ten to fifteen minutes as opposed to you know TV time so uh, maybe that insurrection at least mid card may be a good show it's on May the fifth and if you've got a KU band I don't know that you'll be able to get it but I think there's a pretty good shot you might be able to get it with a KU band satellite in the states because they are going live to Australia and granted. I don't know how that even works as far as like worldwide satellite. Um, if you have to go through the United States to get to Australia, but in the past they have done those um, UK pay-per-views at WF New York, which means that they they do are sending it on a satellite. And if they are, and you got one, you probably you might have a chance to pick it up. For those of you who also pick up SmackDown, which is probably like five people listening, but you know whatever they're they're they're, they're doing with um. Basically, it's a preview of the Judgment Day pay-per-view because it's going to be Austin Undertaker for the title and uh, Helmsley against Kane for the Intercontinental. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's you know what else was amazing last night as far as the women was how they were portraying Deborah. I mean, they've always portrayed Deborah as stupid, but uh, last night she was uh, just as stupid as ever. And, you know, Vince comes out and he does his long speech about how... You know, marriage should be sacred, and I don't approve of divorce. They should be illegal. All this totally sarcastic. I I, 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 I was totally amused by McMahon, by the way. I just, oh yeah, I don't know I what mean, it was. He was you good. know anybody in the right mind knew. You know, the whole angle here is he's just being sarcastic. He doesn't want half his money taken. And so they send Deborah out to just go. You know, Vince, I don't believe a word you say. And she just came <laughs> off as so stupid. And throughout the show, you know, Ross is teasing that Austin won't win Husband of the Year. And it's like they have to be leading a, a split up angle or something. And why? God, if I was uh, if I was Austin, I would not allow Steve that. Austin agree to that one. If I was Austin, I would not agree to that angle. I think that they're going to turn her heel. I think they have mm -hmm. to. That's the only way I can see getting out of this one. Uh, let's see real quick as far as ratings. It ended up at a five point one, um, which is uh, I, I mean I don't think that's a good number as far as an unopposed number. I mean it's, you know obviously it's a great number for cable for any other show. Uh, the main event with with Triple H and Jeff Hardy did a 5-8. I thought they did a good job of, I mean, you know, throughout the show, I thought they did a really good job of building up the main event. I mean, I was enjoying that show. I mean, I enjoyed the show anyway. I thought Hunter and Jeff Hardy had a good match, not a great match. But, um, I mean, I just thought, wow, they were doing such a great job of building up when Hunter doesn't win. <laughs> but then he won. So, he won. So, so that was quite strange to me. Add that to um, the list we had on the feedback site. Yeah. Well, people did see that coming. I think I think most everyone kind of actually I think that most people who really follow the WWF expected that it was this fluke thing it would be a fluke thing that no one's getting elevated um, and I I guess um, just thought that like you know you could like fool those people and actually elevate him and he doesn't even have to like you know Hunter still could have even won and sold the whole match for him you know what I mean I mean there's so many yeah. ways you could have. There's so many ways but I, of the, the different things yesterday when we were talking about this that you could have done, and they still could salvage it based on, like, if they do a tag team match, say, on SmackDown, and the Hardys win, although if the Hardys win, it's only going to be because Undertaker and Kane interfere, so that ain't going to help yeah, them anyway. Yeah, it's not going to be a win. I don't think they yeah. can salvage it at this point. Well, we'll find out tonight if they can salvage it, but it did not 
<laughs> I do not understand what they did last night, and I will leave it at that, because they could have done the same thing and it's not hurt them as much. And it almost seemed like, watching it, that they were bound and determined not to elevate anyone, which is why yes. I said it came, off, it came off so WCW. It's like that's how WCW would do their baby faces. They'd give you this glimmer of hope and then shove it in your face, and then sooner or later you have no more hope for those baby faces. And you know what happens when there's no hope for baby faces? No one goes to matches anymore. Not that that's not that WWF has that problem yet, but WCW didn't yeah, have that problem in '98 when they were doing this. Just remember how far WCW fell and how fast it happened. That's right. Who would have thought? Anyway, well, I guess we sort of thought. But looking at 1998 at the business, who could have even imagined? Actually, I don't even think I could imagine it would have fallen as far as it did in two years. Uh, no, but you also couldn't have imagined it would have been as bad for those two years either. Yeah. Not, not, I mean, I imagined it would be bad. I imagined all the problems, you know, the, the basic problems we all knew were going to happen. But the detailed stupidity, no. I, we couldn't have seen that one coming. Mm -mm. Uh, let's see. The, the poll we did, uh, as far as do you think there will be a second season of the XFL, kind of split down the middle, 45% yes and 55% no. By the way, the XFL number uh, in the Fast Nationals was up to a 2.1, which is actually way up because I think they were like a 1.0. Oh, I'm thinking about a 1.7 or a 1.8 last week. That's not way up, but they'll, 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 they'll take it as way up, won't That's they? That's a 35% increase. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Oh, my God. There was an interview yesterday on um, uh, Carl DeMarco of WF Canada, and he's talking about the XFL. I'm, I'm going to get it up on the website after the show. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just so funny because he's just going like, well, you know, we really only expected a 3.0. And what happened was we had this unusually oh. large rating the first week. And then when we came back down to what we really expected, you know, everybody was calling it a disappointment, but if we didn't have that large first week, and then he was going like, and you know, like UPN and TNN, I mean, they're thrilled with the numbers. They're bigger numbers than those stations ever get. Like, you know, you know what I, I can't believe is like, the people in the WF have been saying that week after week, and, and no, I haven't seen one reporter, you know, take those like excuses, you know what I mean, the Saturday night excuse, you know, the ones that we talk about like every single week. Yeah. And just go, wait a minute. If that's the case, then why isn't why are the Sunday ratings worse than Saturday? Or wait a minute, UPN didn't even have programming, and it's the lowest-rated show on the entire network now. So how is that good? <laughs> how are they thrilled with the lowest-rated show on their network? And the TNN numbers, I mean, granted, TNN is not, um, you know, a highly-rated cable station, but I mean, my God, they're at the end, um, they were just slight, like they're just slightly ahead of Rock and Bowl, and you know, nobody was like exactly talking about Rock and Bowl doing great numbers, if you remember. You know, I mean, they're 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 like just it's slightly. It's just funny now that the blame is being put on the nine point five. Yeah, and on the media for not knowing that all they expected was three point oh when they were selling the spots for four point fives and five point fives themselves. Yeah. Anyway, I don't, we didn't talk more about that last night. Also, one more thing on Raw in Canada for those in TSN. TSN had to do their big apology last night. So during the uh, commercial, I think it was the commercial after the Asian Christian match, but I could be wrong on the commercial. Uh, they made the following announcement, TSN. The Canadian Broadcast Standards Council has found that TSN has breached certain provisions in the C CAB Sex Role Portrayal Code and the CAB Violence Code in its broadcast of WF Raw's War of May 29, 2000. Um, you know, it's funny, but I'll stop right there. Um, you know, they could have, like, looked at, like, any episode of Raw... <laughs> And found all of these same things. It's like they only looked at one episode and found like three or four code violations. Do you realize if they actually sat there like the University of Indiana guy and watched 52 weeks of Raw, they'd have like 2,000 violations probably. Um, like anyway, a, uh, an apology to every commercial. I think they, I think that they have to start putting up warnings during a lot of the commercials now. But anyway, by using certain derogatory and demeaning terms and referring to women during the broadcast, TSN breached Clause 4 of the Sex Role Portrayal Code. By using a hockey stick, a wrestling belt, and metal chairs to assault wrestlers, TSN breached Article 10 of the Violence Code. My God, I mean, that's that's like... What clause that's did not... Big Show break? What? What clause did Big Show break? Well, that's they didn't do that one, but um, they may have bleeped that one out on... Um, you know, they may have edited that out. Because TSN's getting the heat for not editing, you know, well enough, which is funny, because... Poor... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I feel sorry for TSN. I mean, they, there's no way. You know what I mean? You cannot, you just cannot win. Um, the interesting thing about uh, the using of the hockey stick, the wrestling belt, and metal chairs, I mean, is I don't think there's a week of Raw where there's no metal chairs. Mm -hmm. I mean, they violate that one every week. I mean, if they have to start editing the chair shots starting next, I, w I wonder about that, because that's not male on female. Um, 
that they're being uh, you know yelled at on this one. This is just violence during the course of the show. So anyway, they breached Article 10 of the Violence Code by failing to provide viewer viewer advisories following each of the commercial breaks during the first hour of the show, advising audiences of, advi of its violent content. TSN breached Article 5 of the Violence Code. So I think that means that at least in that first hour, they have to go in every commercial break and uh, and do a viewer advisory from this point forward. I guess I don't know. Hmm. It'd be interesting. Let's start with some emails here. We have a lot on last night's show. Uh, while thinking, while watching the Triple H versus Jeff Hardy match last night, I couldn't help but think of Hulk Hogan versus Billy Kidman. <laughs> that's funny you should mention that because I didn't think of it once during the match, and that's all I thought of after the match. Throughout the entire match last night, the only offense Jeff got was a few punches that. Triple H brushed off, as well as a top rope drop kick. What was the point of giving the title Jeff in the first place if he wasn't even going to look competitive when he was in the ring against Triple H? Even worse, he lost cleanly. Personally, I'd much rather have seen Austin cost Jeff the title or have Austin interfere and cause a DQ finish and have Matt make the save at the end. You know, one thing, I don't want to hear anyone, anyone like uh, com um, trying to defend Triple H on this one. Well, no, no, I do. Try. Okay? I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him on the website. Don't worry. Yeah. No, seriously. I mean, like, I, I, it's, it's, if he won, the, him winning the title is not is not an issue. Um, but that behavior in that match that he was going over at the end to kill Jeff Hardy. I mean, I don't even care what they do tonight. They, it's still not an excuse for what happened last night in that match. By the way, I actually brought that up with one of the higher ups in the WWF last night, and you know what they said? Hmm. We thought Triple H sold tremendously for him. Oh yeah, he sure so. did. Anyway, that's why. Well, that's what I was told. Just want you to know. Uh, gents, uh, let's just, see. Gents, just to give you a quick update, uh, we may or may not have Ken Shamrock. They're trying to locate. <laughs> we already knew. We already. No, we, we, I, they're trying to locate him as we speak. So uh, <laughs> we've known that all along. I know. I know. But they're trying to. They're trying to find him right now. So. Oh, I hope they. <laughs> okay. Good job. Uh, let's see. Um, it's like he's uh, in the jungle or something, you know. <laughs> Oh my God! On is there safari. a good yeah? Is there a good source for a DVD or good quality videotapes of Japanese organizations? I like all styles, but mostly the junior heavyweight high flyers and the garbage stops in FMW, Big Japan, New Japan, All Japan. They're all great. Big Japan, FMW. I, I I'm so bored watching FMW now. Big Japan's different. I mean, I can see where you might like it, um, but FMW. It's like FMW to me is like the worst. It's like WWF, but with like Horrible storylines and, and 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 bad wrestlers, but it's like trying to it's like somebody like a real horrible copy of WWF. Um, All Japan, you know, All Japan really isn't that good anymore. Uh, New Japan's hit and miss, uh, but anyway, something else. Um, as far as like good source, I mean, I only know the you know the video dealers. I mean, as far as like the direct DVDs and things like that, I'm not sure. Is there's still not market in this country, um, except for those FMW tapes, and and actually, they're missing out. You know, I think that there's a market for that. Obviously, because the FMW tapes, they made the top 20. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, so, I, I, they, yeah, they are. They're missing out on something there. Um, what was I going to say about that? I saw the Osaka Dome, and um, <sighs> what do I think about the Osaka Dome? I mean, you know, the commercials were not nearly as annoying to me watching it as I thought. And I think that if it wasn't Even for the Even during the Liger match? No, see, if it wasn't for the fact that the Liger match only went a minute... And it was already over when they came back. I don't think anyone would have complained, but because they lost that whole first match, which, by the way, was replayed on Saturday night on the New Japan TV show, the whole minute and a half, um, <laughs> I think that it, that's what annoyed people about the later commercial break. Because really, you know, there was, there was one minute breaks at the beginning of matches. It wasn't that bad. The wrestling yeah. was all pretty. The wrestling was all pretty decent. I mean, Fujita and Scott Norton was not a good match, but it's probably the best Scott Norton match you know you'll ever see against you know like someone who's not a miracle worker. Um, and Fujita's no miracle worker. I mean, the people, you know, like, like, basically, Scott Norton just killed him, like, brutally. But I guess, you know, Fujita can take it, which I feel very sorry for him, because when your reputation is... What a is, gimmick is that, that is to have. Yeah, the, the Paul Varlin's gimmick. I mean, when your reputation is that you can hit somebody in the head so hard, and they can take it and not get knocked out, um, that is not a pleasant way to live, because... Um, that results in a lot of brain damage in later life, or, or maybe not even later life, because he was taking these real. They were trying to make it look like Valley Tudo, so Scott Norton's just hitting, hitting him with his knees to the head really hard, and you know punching him pretty hard, headbutting him hard. 
Um, it was brutal, and um, the finish yeah, was kind of like the whole Mick Foley and, and Balls Mahoney deal. I mean, they've been hitting the head so hard with these chairs that, like, at any point during the future, if they take a weak chair shot, you know, they can't get away with it like someone like Austin would be able to. Yeah, because they have the reputation. Oh yeah, poor Balls Mahoney. That's another one. You know, and uh, and Tanaka too. Remember when Masato Tanaka and Balls Mahoney did those matches in, in ECW? Yeah, those yeah. were scary. And I think I think that Masato Tanaka probably still has a ring in his ears to this moment from those matches a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. The the um, so anyway, the weird thing you know watching that match is is it's like the people are kind of I mean it's not like it's a great match or even a good match, but it, it wasn't as horrible as it looks on paper. Then Fujita when he wins, it's like all of a sudden it's like this revelation of science. Oh my God, this guy's the world champion. There's something really wrong. And, like, he's out there with the belts and the trophy and everything, and the place is just quiet. And they're just, like, looking at this vision of Kazuyuki Fujita, this preliminary wrestler, as the world champion. And they're just, you can just see they're just totally not accepting it. Yeah. So, anyway, um, Hashimoto and Sasaki, they tried to do a Valley Tudor match. I thought that was a hell of a match. The six man, uh, with Chono was, was good because Taiokiyo was good and Kojima and, and Tenzon are very good. And, uh, what was the other one? Um, the Kawada and, and Fuchi against Choshu and um, and Koshinaka match was all right. Um, probably disappointing, really. I mean, it was, you know, for Kawada, he didn't really get to show much. It was really the Ricky Choshu show, you know, Ricky Choshu just larrying everybody. I mean, it had decent heat. And then the other one was Nagata Nakanishi, and it was just too short. Nagata's very good. I mean, but um, Nakanishi wasn't really all that good. It kind of disappointing. Uh, let me see what we got here. Uh, this is, how about Jerry Lawler going to work for WCW? Shane could hire him and claim that he now has half of the great Monday night team. Someday, somebody will understand what is going on in wrestling. Okay? Shane could hire him. Okay. One, Vince owns the company. Two, Vince and Jerry Lawler are on bad terms. And he's not going to hire him for WCW. Okay? It's not going to happen. I mean, it may happen someday when they make up, but it's not going to happen like this week. Okay? Uh, let's see. How do you see the heel turn of Steve Austin going? I mean, I just think Steve Austin is, is a great performer, so I like it. I mean, I don't care if he gets cheered or booed. It depends on, like, the um, attendance figures and the buy rate. And quite frankly, this buy rate may be way down, and, and I won't blame that on Austin because I just think that it's a weak main event. Uh, which w- What a reaction, just... by the way, when Lita was going up the ramp and out walks Steve Austin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, which WF superstars can you see being pushed to main event status in the next two years? Nobody now, at this um, rate. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you think HBK will ever be back? Ever is a long time, so probably, but uh, not soon. Will Taz ever return to being a full-time wrestler? Yes, at some point he will, but he will not be happy when that day comes. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm just asking about Road Dog and eBay. I don't even know what to say about that. You got anything to say about Road Dog and eBay? Just that someone actually bid $5,100 for two hours of his time. I think that that person pulled out. Really? Because they were still up there on uh, Sunday night. There was like one day left. Well, well, the um, there were the plenty of bit... pullouts, and I uh, read most of them. And I feel bad for Road Dog because he has quite a reputation, and I think people uh, use that reputation against him to play a little joke on him on that eBay, as far as making a bid and then pulling out. And of course, when you pull out of a bid, they want to know why you retracted it, and. Uh, I don't want to get into any details about what those retractions were, but you can go up to eBay and check it out for yourself. I was told that I should look at that because it's really funny. I haven't had a chance yet. So. It's in the newsletter this week, so uh, okay. you can read it there. This is some comments on um, on Raw here. Let's see. It's uh, Trish was horrible. She forgot her lines, and her delivery was nothing short of unacceptable. I agree. WCW Tech Crew did a great job of shooting the finish of the main event. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the Craig uh, Leathers see. emails I got last night. <laughs> uh, he yeah, this... the studio. <laughs> I was mad watching Triple H versus Jeff. The thing I thought would be, I thought the thing is, I thought before the match I would end up being frustrated. Just not this frustrated. <laughs> Everything exactly was bad with thought. this match, other than the great buildup of the match during the show. We had a true baby face against a true heel. It really had potential, but the crowd was dead when Helmsley was healing on Hardy. You know what? I gotta say something about that. To remind me of the Fujita thing, was Jeff walks down the aisle, and I'm expecting this pop, and there's no pop. I mean, at the beginning of the match, 
And Helsley comes out first as the challenger, gets this huge reaction, both you know, both cheers and boos. Then Jeff comes out, and you know, I hate to say it, but the crowd wasn't ready for him to be in that role. I mean, they saw it as like they they saw it the same way. Obviously, Hunter saw it. So maybe in that sense, he's right, and the guy just wasn't ready for the well, push. I mean, but actually, you know, part of it probably was they're watching all those vignettes too on the big screen of everyone saying this is a fluke, and this poor guy is coming out here to get slaughtered. Maybe he maybe you're right. Uh, let's you know, see. I once had a match like that with uh, Young Pistol Pete Cruz. It was only like three minutes, but it was very similar. And I got back, I got back through the curtain, and Tim reamed me. And he has never reamed me before, but he reamed me for that one. And I was watching this match last night, and it was actually last night was, as far as crushing the guy, even worse. How could they okay, do that? So, uh, let's see. Uh, there should have been more hope spots called for Jeff during the during the match. Absolutely. Uh, that may have brought the crowd into it a bit more. It would have, because when he did get his comebacks, they were into it. Uh, Hunter either should not have won the belt, or they shouldn't have had the Hardys get totally destroyed at the end. You know, one or the other. I agree. Austin should not have gotten any revenge, should have, should not have gotten any revenge on Matt Hardy that night. It should have been on SmackDown. I agree with that too. This is what should have occurred, okay? Let's see. Lita comes out first without Jeff. Hunter and Steph are in Lita's face asking, where's Jeff? Stephanie Staff slaps Lita. Hunter goes after Jeff. During this time, Jeff comes down and climbs the ropes. Lita slaps Triple H, who turns around, signs the slap. Jeff cross body blocks Hunter, who doesn't see him. Nice near fall to start the match. The crowd is hooked right away. Okay, Trent, this is from Trent. Trent, you're good, because this is good. Triple H then heals on him, giving Jeff every, giving him some hope spots. During Jeff's comeback, Stephanie breaks up a near fall. Good. Lita goes after Stephanie. Triple H pedigrees Lita. I think that they would not do that one last night. I think that that was specific. You notice Lita never got touched last night, and I think that because of the week before and the re reaction to it, that that spot they would ixnay. Matt comes down. Matt and Jeff double team Triple H. Austin comes down, takes out Matt. Jeff pins Hunter after a swanton. Show over. Yeah, but then you don't get Undertaker and Kane in there. Great. Which is that's yeah. perfect. Okay. Uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, then he's oh he's got SmackDown book too. Okay, yeah, so maybe, let's go, let's go. Hunter and Austin whine to Regal about the Hardys not having paid their dues, and they act like there's something special and need to be humbled. They get Steve Regal, William Regal, sorry, to book a tag match, Hardys against Undertaker and Kane, with Triple H's referee. Okay, during the match, Triple H pedigrees Jeff, Undertaker goes for the pin on Jeff, but Hunter throws tr Undertaker off, starts beating on Jeff. Undert Undertaker attacks Triple H for not letting him pin Jeff. Austin runs down and gives Undertaker a stunner. Hebner comes down and counts the pin as Jeff pins Undertaker. Now Triple H and Austin have an issue with Undertaker and Kane for the next pay-per-view, and Jeff has another win in the top mix. They could even do a three-way. Yeah, but that's even almost Jeff... like the same Hulk Hogan win again because Jeff didn't beat anybody. You know, but he didn't get. Okay, Austin you're right. Beat but... Undertaker. Okay, you're right, but they didn't They're get just destroyed like nearly. in this game, and that's what everyone's going to look at him as. Okay, but at least they got wins as pawns, as opposed to being beaten up. Yeah, but it's and just being like pawned. saying, well, at least Kidman got a win over Hogan. At least Vampiro got a win over Hogan. Okay, you're right. This is uh, from Jeff, who goes, I read the television ratings for Raw and SmackDown. There's usually a number for the show, and there's a higher number called the share. What is the share? Okay, the share is this, uh, the rating is determined by the number of homes, um, the percentage of the homes. That are watching or that are available um, at that m moment. So uh, a national rating, let's say a UPN rating um, or an NBC rating, is based on um, basically a little over 100 million homes. I think it's 100 million 220,000 homes. Uh, the cable ratings are based on the universe for that cable station. So like for TNN, it's 80.8 million. For uh, TBS, it's like 82 million. And it's the percentage of those homes. So let's say 3.5 rating means the 3.5 percent of the homes that have that station uh, are watching the show. The share is the percentage of the homes that are actually watching television that are watching that. So if someone goes to you, say on a, a real bad rating on a Saturday night, okay, uh, and the rating's really bad, like say XFL or SmackDown. Jim Ross said this on uh, on, thir on on you know on his thing on Friday, you know about how. You know, these other shows are down, so therefore it must have been less people watching television. What you'd then do is go, okay, what's the share? And the SmackDown share was a 6. It's usually a 7 or an 8. So the share was down, which means that, no, it's not less people watching television. It's that your rating was down. Or on the case of Saturday night when the XFL on NBC does a uh, 3 share, okay, 
Uh, that doesn't mean that people are not home on Saturday night. That means that people are, that that plenty of people are watching TV on Saturday night. They're just not watching NBC. So that's <laughs> so that's what the whole deal was with Cher. So whenever you hear someone go, people are not, you know, people aren't home or blah blah blah. Whenever you hear that excuse, check the share. If the share is really good, even though the rating is down, that means that people aren't home watching TV. If the share sucks, that means that that's a bogus excuse. Uh, let's see, this is from Scott Foy, who goes, listen to you talk about the Ricky Morton, Ric Flair feud, got me thinking about a horrendous independent show I saw this weekend featuring the Rock and Roll Express. This is going to make me, make me really sad. Ricky Morton is now a dead ringer for Garth from Wayne's World. All he's missing are the glasses. Robert Gibson has not aged well at all. Yeah, I know that. In fact, if he grew a mustache, he would be Jake Roberts' twin brother. Ouch. Wow. They wrestled the, the New South, and the whole match was a collection of comedy spots from the old Mid-South Rock and Roll Express Midnight Express matches. Uh, despite the fact that there was very little actual wrestling, Morton worked 90% of the match. <laughs> he always did. Give credit for Ricky Morton. His facials when selling are fantastic. The main event was supposed to be Jerry Lawler against the Road Dog, but Lawler told the crowd that the Road Dog has been no-showing all of his independent dates, and he didn't show up tonight either. No refunds were offered. Actually, well, that's true. Yeah. Lawler then ended up wrestling some unknown independent wrestler named Prince Justice, who, I, by the way, here's a very big guy, who looked like a combination of Rhino, Terry Gordy, and The Big Show. Wow. Uh, how could you be a combo? Now, which Terry Gordy? The good Terry Gordy or the bad Terry Gordy? But anyway. Well, they compared uh, to the big show, so it's the bad one. Yeah. Re replace the leg drop with a flying fist drop, and the max was worked exactly like all of the Hogan, King Kong, Bundy matches. And to top it off, they had a nine-man battle roll. Either, easily one of the worst independent shows I've ever seen. The most entertainment came from watching the ring and waiting for it to break, because every time someone got whipped in the ropes, one of the ring posts would start leaning in a different direction. Have you ever worked on a show where, like, Every where you're watching like the prelim matches, and you're just sure the ring is gonna like fall apart. Like, no? Uh, no, never. Okay. Our ring okay. is pretty sturdy. All Too right. sturdy. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Did you listen to the Russo show? No. Uh, let's see. Who cares if WF messes up their salary structure to get Goldberg? Um, I mean, what's anyone gonna do? Quit because they're not making as much money as Goldberg? What are they gonna do? Go nowhere. Um, okay, no one cares. They just have a bad attitude in the locker room, and they don't want that. Yeah, they have that, and plus, the other thing is, is that they don't want to, they, they, are, they don't want to mess up, the, if they, I think the feeling is if you mess up your salary structure for one guy, then another guy who's right near the top will start complaining about it, or the guy, like, let's say Goldberg comes in with a guarantee, and it's bigger than, say, Hunter's guarantee, just, just as an example, all of a sudden he's going to go, wait a minute, I've been with you. I shouldn't make, let's say Angle. We'll go with that. Angle, because Angle's got a real low guarantee. Although Angle won't complain, so I guess it really doesn't matter. So let's go back to Hunter. Okay. <laughs> and he'll go, look, I've been with you. I've drawn all these buy rates. I've drawn all these houses. I've drawn, I was here during, you know, had all these great matches, and you're giving this unknown guy more money than me based on that he might work out. Well, look at Big Show. Look at Lex Luger and all those guys who might work out that never did. And then Vince will go, God damn, you make a great point there, and, and I'm not going to offer him that guarantee. And, uh,. I'll give anyway. it to you. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but, uh, I mean, no, but, it, hey, it, it's up to Vince. This is Vince's call. If Vince wants to give him the big money, I mean, Vince can afford him, and if Vince wants him, he'll get him, and from what, from all I hear, and some of this may be posturing publicly, but I don't think it is, from all I hear, they're not going to pay big money for Bill Goldberg, and Bill Goldberg is most likely not going to be coming in. Anyway, we'll be, we I just had an idea right? real quick, though. Okay, go ahead. Here's a real quick idea. Goldberg could get his $2 million a year, he would work for WWF and play in the XFL. He'd be a drawing card for the first week in the XFL. Um, and he'd probably, depending on what kind of, well, he's old now. He's, he, Bill's, Bill is 34. There are guys in the XFL that are that are older than that. I mean, Dave Diaz and Fonte went to college with me, so he's got to be close to 40. And they can and just he say playing. he's injured the whole season, he never play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? He'll kill the salary structure of the XFL. That's true. I mean, you know, the highest paid guy there is, what, $45,000, $50,000 base? Mm hmm So, I don't know. And we do not have Ken Shamrock as a guest at this moment. Maybe we will. And Do, do we know any more? No, we don't. So, we know no more about this. If he calls, he calls. If he doesn't, he doesn't. That's what it looks well, like right now. We have so many emails here. Good Lord. Good Lord. This is unbelievable. A uh, number of emails. I bet you they're all about Jeff Hardy, too. But uh, anyway, I'll read a couple of them real quick. I live in the UK, so I don't get to see Raw SmackDown until the weekend. However, I find it real hard to comprehend the idea of putting the Intercontinental title on Jeff Hardy only to take it away from him six days later. A in really a good idea would have... What? In a squash. In a... Yeah, it's not taking it away from him. I 
the finish really, the way the finish went wasn't good, but if he had won, if Triple H would have regained the title in a different way, you know, depending on how they did the follow-up, I wouldn't have been, thought that would have been bad at all, especially since, I mean, you know, they obviously are going in the direction of Triple H and Kane feud for the Intercontinental, so, you know, you kind of have to put it back on Triple H at some point. They could have waited a week, but, you know, because they don't really need to get it on him until May 5th, but, or before May 5th. Anyway, a really good idea would have been to keep the title on Jeff, have Triple H become more and more obsessed with revenge every night. You can get Jeff over as someone who won't quit or back down despite Triple H being the crap out of him every night. Dissension between Austin and Hunter could then begin with Stone Cold constantly baiting Triple H and making fun of him about Jeff. See, I would have liked that. That would have been good, too. It could even lead to Jeff becoming cocky and turning heel against Matt. And now you're getting too far. You don't need that much. Everyone... Uh, maybe down the line, but not yet. The only way I can see this ending is for Undertaker and Kane getting Matt and Jeff's spot. Now, they had it already. While the Hardys go back to the same matches with Edge and Christian and the Dudleys. Well, there you go. With X-Pac, maybe with X-Pac and, uh, and uh, Justin Credible. With a bit of luck, uh, Triple H and Austin will beat Undertaker and Kane. Well, I don't think that will happen. Hunter and Austin then start bragging that they're an unbeatable team. Up pop Jericho and Benoit. A uh, nice build up to King of the Ring, and the Canadian duo gets a clean win. Quit dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vince Russo said on his website that he was going to pitch for MTV's Tom Green to be the man, man behind GTV because Dustin had fallen out with Vince. Great. Who cares? <laughs> what would that have accomplished? Tom Green then's going to like uh, go into a bunch of G matches with these people? What? For GTV. Yeah. Uh, well, they sure gave Jeff a big push. I think, if anything, I think it just killed him as a singles wrestler, and I'll tell you why. Jeff beat Triple H on SmackDown, but he only beat him because of a run-in by Matt. Triple H does a promo on Heat and says that it was nothing but a fluke, a mistake. The mere notion of Jeff beating him is a joke. And then, with a win, he proves it to be correct. Yeah. He is so also, smart. No, not this time. This time he's too smart for his own good because... By killing future opponents and future business, they're gonna, the company's going to um, get stale quicker. I was just pointing out that the character is smart. He was right. Yeah, but the heel's not supposed to be right all well, the Hunter time. always is. Why yeah, is that's that? What, and that's why he's going to end up being a babyface down the road. I know. And, uh, and feud with Austin, and no one else is going to get over to get a program with Austin. They'll make sure of that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Not that Jeff, ever, uh, that Jeff was ready for it because he wasn't. Uh, then again... Uh, let's see, okay, let's see, this is from Eddie, this is not about that. I just finished watching tapes of World Championship Wrestling from December 1983 and January 1984, and have two questions. One Saturday, Gordon Soley announced that Bob Armstrong was in the hospital undergoing plastic surgery as a result of a match with Ted DiBiase, who was scheduled to have a match with at the upcoming Omni show. A group watching Bob Armstrong remember his facial features changing dramatically. Was this injury the result of something in the ring, or was he involved in an auto accident or something? Okay, Bob Armstrong was lifting weights, and I don't know exactly what happened, but, um, the weights fell on his face and um, hurt him really, really bad. He needed reconstructive surgery. And at one point, I, I think this was on a Friday when he was lifting and the weights, and so they're doing the TV Saturday morning, and they don't know if he's going to, um, they don't know if he's going to live or die or, 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 you know, how serious the injury was. It was really that bad. And so they go in there, and, and he was working a program with DiBiase, and they say on the air, you know, Ted DiBiase did this to him. Now, Ted, who's playing a heel, okay, but Ted DiBiase, and if you've ever heard him on the show, even Ted DiBiase found religion and all that. I'm not saying that sarcastically. Ted, and Ted's a good guy. And even when he was at his most immoral in his own mind, you know, with the wine and the women and the girls and the drugs and everything like that that he went through, he still had more morality than most people in wrestling. Because I remember they went in there and they do this whole show and they're talking about, you know, how Ted did this to Bob Armstrong and Bob's in critical condition and this and that for, you know, some injuries that Ted DiBiase gave him. And they brought Ted out for an interview, and now Ted's thinking, you know, there's a chance that Bob's in real bad shape, and he might die. And then Ted goes, that's not true. I didn't do anything. You know, and it just basically blew the whole angle. Then the next week, when it was clear that Bob was going to be fine, although pretty messed up, but he'll be, he'll be returning to wrestling, Ted then took credit for it a week later, as I recall. But, uh, no, he was really a well, nerd. Can you imagine that, though, if something happened to a guy, and there was a chance that he could die, and you're told... You know, you were the guy responsible for this in the storyline, and you need to go out and take credit for it. Yeah. How can you situation. really do that and go, you know, I did this to this guy, not knowing if he was going to be alive the next day? Yeah. Also, in December 1983, the Road Warriors beat Stan Hansen and Bugsy McGraw in a match at the Omni. Oh, I'd have loved to see the Road Warriors against Bugsy McGraw. It's been horrible. For something like the next five Saturday, they showed the same clip of the Road Warriors beating down Stan Hansen with Paul Ellering out 
with Gordon Soley each week running Stan Hansen down. They went on for weeks without a payoff. Did they just drop her? Were they trying to bury Stan Hansen for screwing the promotion? I don't remember. I just don't remember the situation. Stan Hansen probably went to Japan. Probably the idea was when he got back from Japan, he would come back for revenge, and he probably just didn't come back from Japan. So that's probably why I went nowhere. On Monday's show, this is from James in Maryland, uh, you talked about Ricky Morton's feud with Ric Flair. I remember always thinking that Ricky Morton would never win any of those matches. In fact, he never did. But if he did, I would have been pleasantly surprised, not disappointed. Did the bookers think it would have been a good idea for Morton to go over Flair, even if, if he would drop the title back to him a week later or maybe go with a reverse decision angle? I mean, th the deal with Ricky Morton and Ric Flair was that it was an opponent that they could have a phenomenal match and that Ric Flair could actually win because they were afraid of beating um, you know, Magnum TA and Dusty Rhodes, none of those guys, you know, they really, they didn't really want a Nikita. They didn't want Ric Flair to actually beat any of those guys. But Ricky Morton was a safe guy to beat because Ricky Morton was a tag team wrestler. And so the idea was if you beat the tag team wrestler in a singles match, it's fine. And if they'd given Ricky Morton the world title over Ric Flair, it would have been, it would have been stupid because they didn't give the world title to, to people like Ricky Morton in those days and not just because of his size. Just, he just wasn't, you know, they protected that world title. So, so, it was basically a guy for Flair to beat, and Flair sold for him like crazy in the matches and in all the angles, and made him seem like a viable contender, but then did beat him in the in the matches. Uh, let's see. Let's start with JD. JD, what's going on? Hey Dave. Hey Brian. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey. We're doing good. That's good. I want to talk to you guys about a few things. Um, first off, as far as the WWF goes, um, every week we hear about the dark matches on the big shows, Raw and SmackDown, and that. And I was wondering if you guys would like to comment on some of the names like Scott Vick, Steve Bradley, um, all those other guys. I mean, they said that uh, there was talk that Steve Bradley would debut after WrestleMania or something yeah, like that. Yeah, there, there was the plan, I think, even before WrestleMania. They, they've been looking for a spot for Steve Bradley and Scott Vick for a while. i got a feeling that they may both end up in WCW, although that's not been determined yet. Right. Do you see any other guys? I mean, like X Pac, maybe just Incredible Albert, all those guys. I mean, right now, personally, I mean, okay, they're getting the mild to mid moderate push, but do you see those guys in WCW possibly too? Po possibly. Those decisions haven't been made yet. They're going to send three to five guys, but I don't know who they are, and I think that they are careful. I got pretty enough. worried last night when uh, they teased Big Show would be one of them. Yeah. Boy, that's a scary one, isn't it? Yeah. Big Show and Billy Gunn. Yeah, that's what I heard. Billy Gunn is more than definite going to WCW. It's a shame. It's not, de I mean, it's not definite, but I do, I do expect it, though. I do expect it, but it's not definite. Yeah. Nothing's definite. Believe me when I tell you, they have not even hired the writers to write this thing yet. So when you say, like, oh, this is what their plan is, they, right. don't even, they haven't even hired the guys to make the plans to have plans. All right. right. So, so you know, everyone's, like, way ahead of themselves as to what's going on with WCW. Right, a couple other questions. Um, as far as the new WCW announced team, I mean, do you guys see maybe, like, uh, Joey Styles, Don Cows maybe forming up again like they did in ECW, no. maybe? No, you know? no. Okay, and third thing, um, I'm a frequent visitor to WrestlingObserver.com. I enjoy your stuff all the time from both of you guys. And I was just wondering, when are you guys going to have the latest issue one year ago in Figure 4 Weekly? I've been looking for that for a few weeks now. Uh-oh. I know. I haven't put one up for a while. I've been busy. I'll try to put one up this weekend. All right. Yeah, stay cool. All right, thanks. Okay. Let's go to uh, Brad in Mississippi. Brad, what's going on? Hey, guys. Hey, I what's going on? I don't think I've ever been as mad at a finish of a wrestling show as I was last night, even at some of the old WCW. Even in the peak of WCW? No, well, I, after a while, I expected it. I mean, okay. and, and, and I was one of the diehards that was always like, well, okay, whatever. I was going to watch anyway. But, I mean, because, but I guess partly because I was so excited about what they seemed to be doing with Jeff and, and that it was something different. It was like, hey, well, maybe they realize they don't need to get stale and, and do what happened to WCW. Maybe they are going to do something different. And then it was like, nope, here we go again. That reminded me of every false baby face push in WCW. Yeah, I mean, and I was thinking some of those same things, too. And I, I just, if, if, if Hunter was so smart, he would look at what happened to Kevin Nash. And look at what Kevin Nash did to WCW. Okay, but you know what? In his mind, he's going like, I'm a million times the worker Kevin Nash is, and the reason that their thing is their, all their main events stunk, we ha you know, every time I'm in a main event, it's great, so if we keep giving people great matches, we'll be fine. Unfortunately, if you keep giving the people the same great match, you're not fine either. And that's, that's, yeah. where, that's, where, that's, that's where the mistakes come in. But, you know, that's good. on the other end, from the Hunter standpoint, there are the guys who've talked about this before. In the WWF, you are paid by your position on the card. You, your, your guarantee is not necessarily that large, although his is probably pretty decent. But what he's, I'm sure that Hunter's earning many times over what his bottom, what his downside guarantee is. If he is to put someone, like, like right now there's really 
uh, there's three super top guys. It's Hunter, it's The Rock, and it's Austin. And then you got Undertaker and Kane, who are kind of always there. So you got so if anyone breaks through, and one of these guys like falls a notch, let's say Hunter is the one who falls a notch, it it affects his pay. So it's mm -hmm. it's of no economic value to him to put to to make someone to elevate seem anybody. equal to him to elevate someone. Other than like for a one week period to do what they did with Jeff, but but at the end make it clear that hey that was just a fluke and and I'm at this level and he's at this level and everyone knows it, so that's one of the problems you know when everyone talks about the um, you know the, the problem with with having one company owning everything and also one of the problems of not having guaranteed contracts which guaranteed contracts have their problems too because of the motivation level of the guys or you know at least in WCW they had big problems but. Then again, even with guaranteed contracts in WCW, the, the top guys weren't putting people over either. So may, maybe it's not the contracts. Maybe it's just the nature of guys wanting to protect their position, and that's only natural. Yeah, and well, and okay, but then that's why Vince McMahon is there. I mean, I don't yes. know. It just, I would, just, I just. But Vince McMahon is now a television performer, and once you become a television performer, you start worrying about your own storylines more than everyone else's. Um. That was the other thing I didn't understand is why he and Shane were only on the show for like 30 seconds each and they just both disappeared and were pointless. Um, maybe Vince was trying to prove a point because people were saying there was too much McMahon's last week and then he can say, okay. He does that every now and then too. When yeah, people we're start to get annoyed with him, he just disappears for a while. Yeah, we're when he comes back, great... it's a big pop and everything's happy again. Yeah, you go in there, we're giving you great wrestling matches and then you can go in there and go, hey, you did a show of great wrestling matches with all the good workers. And uh, lots of wrestling because you know there's so many complaints about not having enough wrestling on the show. This week you had an 11 minute main event, you had a lot of five minute matches, um, and the rating went down. And then they can go, hey, experiment. People want the soap opera, and uh, we were right. We were right, and they were wrong. Maybe okay. that's what this was all about. We'll find out next week. Okay. But, <clears throat> and the uh, one last thing was that uh, um, I'm just I really I mean without any somebody. Coming along, and uh, that was the one other thing. What are the odds of all the? Because there's talk about it everywhere in the business circles about Ted Turner selling his his lot out of Time Warner and starting something on his own. And what would the likelihood of him starting over again with another wrestling promotion if he did that? I don't think wrestling would be on the top of the list of things that Ted Turner wants to do once he's out of Time Warner. I mean, he's got a lot of different projects he's looking at. I just don't see wrestling, especially. If, if he has no television, you know, what would be the point of him having no, no, wrestling? No, no, he buys a network. The well. idea is that he, he, would buy a, he would buy a new network, and then on that new network, you know, one of the things he would use to build the network would be wrestling. Right. So that's what I've been, like, when the merger first went through, the talk in the business circles was that once he woke up and realized that he was going to have no power in all this stuff, he was going to sell out and buy uh, NBC or whatever, something like that. He wants to buy NBC still, but I think he's spent all his, you know, he's spending money to buy that Russian network, which isn't going to do any good for pro wrestling. No, not at all. But, but um, you know, there, there's another thing about this though, and, and again, I don't know what was really interesting is the contract that they signed, because generally speaking, if you're in a business and you sell your business to somebody else, um, you sign a non-compete. Now, if, if AOL or Time or, or 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 Warner Brothers or Time Warner signed a non-compete. That isn't Ted Turner signing an non-compete. Now, if Ted Turner, if it's his name on that contract of sale, then I'm sure in that contract of sale is a non-compete, in which case Ted couldn't start a wrestling company even if he wanted to. Yeah, but so I, was, and I don't know, I don't know what the case is on that. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would. I, I thought everything was under Tom Warner's deal now, anyway. But, yeah, you're probably right. You're but, probably right. But but which brought me to my other point is is that two to three years. I I mean I can I can see another. I mean. Pro wrestling could be dead. Six months from now, we don't even know. I mean, I mean, it won't be dead in six months. But no, I mean, there's no way of having any idea where pro wrestling will be because look how much it changed in the last three years. Three years ago, who could ever imagine what it would be like this? How much it changed in the last six months? Yeah, yeah, six months, three well, months. It, so what happened with WWE? So much different business from December. Is what scares me though, is because it looks like WWF is doing the exact same thing all over again, and and if they go down, what else is there? A bunch of reasons. Yeah. Well, you know, the, you know, you're right about that. And then the other problem with that is, is that WWF has WCW to learn from, and that makes it even worse if they've suffered the same fate. Michael Danielson, what is, in your opinion, the best wrestling federation? Not most popular, but which has the best in the ring action? What do you think? What do you think, Brian? Best in the ring action? As far as in the ring, ah, uh, jeez, top to bottom. Uh, yes. Maybe the WWF right now. 
I was going to say WWF also. Yeah. Um, as far as week by week, um, you know, house shows and, and pay-per-views and everything, I would say WWF. I mean, there's, you know, EMLL, when it has a major show, they're awfully good. Um, you know, uh, New Japan on its good nights is awfully good. But I think uh, night in and night out, I would, I would probably go with WWF. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is someone who says that on uh, WF.com has various video clips from Raw and SmackDown the day after the show. The tapes are often unedited. An example of this was uh, Hunter calling Austin a pussy on the air, which was bleeped out live, but on WF.com it was unedited. Such was the case when Big Show and Shane McMahon had their conversation. Oh, it no. sounded to me like the Big Show said the word goofs. It seemed like the bleep guy on the bleep, bleep button got heard it and freaked out. So, so maybe he did say goofs. Uh, let's see... If WCW proves to be profitable, will Vince still close it down? Um, well, I mean, if it's profitable in the long... Sooner or later, when they do the interpromotional, someone's got to lose, and it ain't going to be WWF. So, at that point, you know, it's probably doomed anyway. Um, if it proves to be profitable, they'll, they could drag out the interpromotional thing for as long as they want, so it will certainly buy it a lot of time. I mean, uh, let's say just as a wild fantasy that WCW became close to as big as the WWF in terms of making money each year. Pay-per-views were successful. They could actually tour. And it things were going really well. It would there even happen. be a point to doing the interpromotional? Uh, they, if it they meant could, that likely well, they yeah, would well, lose do, one of those money-making promotions? No, but you, you could do interpromotional as this giant pay-per-view. You could split the matches and then have them both go their merry way for another year and then come back you know, the next year and do it again. Uh-huh. You know, um, you know that you could always do that. Rather than do a full-blown feud where somebody has to win, you could just say this yeah, is one time I only. See, I mean, if, if the thing really is successful, I don't see the point of beating one of them. No, then then you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Alex in Puerto Rico. Alex, what's going on? Um, the um, pamphlet Brian sent me. Alex. Hello. Oh, the um, C um, Caribbean Wrestling Association April 29th is going to be launched in Isabella. Okay. Isabella, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Cool. And um, I went to this independent show this Sunday in Boca. Yeah. The crowd was hot for the whole show. Good. It was um, Iman Latin Wrestling. Okay. I was wondering, if the WWF has a show here in Puerto Rico on metal, will WWF yes. have a syndicated show anywhere like um, in the Caribbean? The WCW does not exist. I mean, the new Nitro. Uh, if WF wants to syndicate it, um, I doubt it. I doubt that they're going to put that show into syndication, so I would seriously doubt it unless you get uh, TNN that you'll see it in Puerto Rico. You're not going to see it on broadcast TV. They're not, there's, no, there's no plans to do WCW syndication as of right now. But, I mean, in Puerto Rico, I never get gotten to see ECW anyway. Okay. Only on pay-per-view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, any um, NWA news? No. Um, how's um, Extreme Pro Wrestling doing? The next ECW. Uh, the, the, when's their next show? I don't. Uh, they're, they're doing the show. Uh, doing the show in Patriot Center, or is, I think is that what it's called? I don't even remember the name of the building. Um, I don't know if I'd call I don't the know, next I mean, ECW. Yeah. Well, someone has to say that. Someone has to be. Them in combat. Them in combat zone, right? Co yeah, combat zone wrestling. They're like the next ECW, right? No, neither of them are. But that's okay. <laughs> someone has to be, so they can both be. But well, neither XCW of them are going to be. Or, wrestling, wrestling Zone. Better? Wrestling Zone's the other one. They're also going to be the next ECW. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Well, um, XPW expand, like, to fight the WWF, compete? No. No, that will not happen. That will not happen. Anybody besides me love the XFL? Oh, well, plenty of people love the XFL. About 100,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that's not enough for a TV rating, but no, a lot of people love the XFL. I would like to know, um... Anybody, um, did you hear um, Conan came to Puerto Rico to fight Fidel Sierra this weekend? Yeah, Fidel Sierra on, on Saturday and Sunday, yeah. I was wondering, since um, WCW is now with the WWF, will you see someone like um, Ricky Bandera, Shane the Glamour Boy, or even Savio Vega fight in WCW? Uh, I don't think so. I seriously doubt it. I mean, you know, it, it, I guess there's a possibility um, if that's what... Uh, well, all those guys have been released by uh, WWF, so they're just they're under contract to IWA. I mean, the idea that like you know, yeah, Miguel's a good a good worker, and they could re-sign him and put him in the WCW. But I I haven't heard anyone thinking along those lines. So I I 
it, it's, it's going to be filled up with their own developmental guys before they, you know, get anyway from IWA. How about? Yeah, um, I don't think. I don't think it'll happen. How about um, Ray Gonzalez, the Universal Champion for the eighth time? Yes. What about him? Um, you think WWE will would have signed him if they would still exist? No, because no, they would not. Because um, because he was saying that he's Mr. Ratings and he gotten over. <laughs> well, in that case, <laughs> they, they, they yeah. might have considered it. <laughs> Their ratings are off. Are, are are awesome in Puerto Rico. Can't argue that they got the best ratings anywhere in the world right now. I think. Like a twenty-eight share. Yeah, I want to share. Are you kidding? Sunday. Yeah, the forty share. That's right. Forty forty shares on Saturday. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Hey, I want to show every Saturday and Sunday. Hey, no, I got a question. So, so, but then we, we got to get running. Do they have any competition on TV at that time slot, or is it sort of like there's nothing but test patterns on the other stations? No, there's nothing but crappy programming until the IWA comes on at one o'clock here in Puerto oh. Rico. Okay, so what that's else what is on getting... at one o'clock? IWA, but it's nothing well, what else. else? There's nothing no, else no, on what's TV. On, what's on between 11 and 1 when uh, WWC's on? 11 uh, and 1. Children's programming and some other crap. Okay. I mean, that's not specific enough, but that's okay. we got to get running, okay? But can I do something? Yes. Um, the CWA, April 29th and May 6th in Isabella, headlined by Crazy Boy and a paramedic. Cool. Okay. All righty, buddy. Let's go to Terry. Terry, what's up? Hello, how you doing, Dave? Doing fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, um, I got a question too about, um, WCW. Um, well, basically, uh, what I think is this though, um, I don't know if they're gonna change the logo or, um, or not. You know for sure if they're gonna do that? Uh, do not know about the logo. I would think they would. Yeah. I think that, yeah, they probably will, but I think that the fact that they're using the same logo on Shane's license plate says they may not. Mm hmm. Maybe not at the beginning then. I think they're, I think they want to keep some stuff to give it continuity so people think it is the same company rather than think it's just somebody, somebody's using those names and it's, it's not, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think at the beginning that's probably why they're better off starting the name as Nitro too. Yeah, cause the WCW, um, falls under, um, the WWF then, um, it'll be seen only as a traditional organization. Um, what do you mean? I mean, well, basically, um, you know, the big man might try some of the um, the stuff he does on his shows. Um, no, he, I, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be written in the same style. I think that they think that's what the public wants, and it's gonna be similar. Um, I mean, like WWF be, TV with WCW guys or former. Yeah, it's WCW not. They're not gonna do like 1980 style. It ain't gonna happen because you know I, I'm sure that they don't think that's marketable in this country right now, and there's no proof that they're wrong. True, true. Because um, Bishop was saying something about um, in the Wild magazine that um, the stuff Steve Austin would have did that stuff back then. What uh, he's doing now, it would have never worked in WCW then. I uh, disagree completely. Totally disagree with that. Oh, far with the um, beer and all that. Uh, totally disagree. It would have worked exactly the same. Yeah, in the way. Someone that strong of a character, if he'd gotten the same push, with that strong of a character and that strong of an interview, I don't know that it would have. And, 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 and once, once they realized how over it was, no one chopping his legs off, it would have worked, pro shouldn't it, why wouldn't it have worked just as good? What would have been different? Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing that would have been different is someone would chop his legs off when it, when he was starting to get over. But if no one had done that, it'd be probably, it should be the same. I'm gonna tell you probably what happened with DX if it was in uh, WCW at that time. They probably would have had the NWO beating them up every week. Uh, well, they're the same guys. The DX and the, and the NWO would have been the same guys, so they, they would have ended up in the same group. <laughs> I mean, it's the same friends, so they've gotten all their friends in the same group, and uh, they, oh, would have yeah. every, they would have beaten everyone up, and they would have never sold for anyone, and they would have all gotten over real big. That's what would have happened. Mm-hmm, because it seemed like a lot of Triple H's on politics is influenced by Kevin Nash and the rest of the clique. Uh, they all learn from each other. They're smart guys. I mean, they, that's... You know, that's what those guys learned. I mean, that's, that's why they're in their positions. They're not in their positions because, they're in their positions because they understand, uh, winning and losing means something, and they understand the portrayal in front of the cameras means something, mm -hmm. and they understand how to manipulate bookers for their own benefit. That's, that's and why. You know I, what? You know, Hunter is the smartest of them all because right now, Shawn Michaels is at home, Kevin Nash is at home, and they probably don't want him. And oh, X-Pac is in the preliminary match. X-Pac's in the middle of the card. Yep. So he, 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 he survived. All the best. is in, uh, New Japan. Yeah. Still. The smartest of them all. Yep. And he's the best of them all, too. Yeah. Which helps. Yeah. I mean, if Na I'll tell you what, if Nash had Hunter's ability, Nash would be better off than Hunter. Oh, because yeah. Because everyone's a mark for a big guy. 
Yeah, because Kevin Nash got them bad knees and ain't too much of a good worker either. He ain't good like he was back in the day. Uh, he never was good. I don't think I ever saw that day. I thought Sean was, <laughs> I thought the rest of me and Metro him and Shawn Michaels were pretty good. Oh, oh hey, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Shawn Michaels could have had a good match with King Kong Bundy then. <laughs> I mean, come on. Get a hell of a TV match with Yokozuna of all people. I mean, it's like saying like uh, you know, so, like that uh, you know, Nikita Koloff was a great worker because uh, you know Flair, Flair and him had four star matches. It had nothing to do with Nikita Koloff other than he was kind of standing there while Flair bounced off him. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna say another thing I disagree with a lot too was um the fifty. Uh, actually, um I did like the push on uh, with the um, filthy um, animals. Uh, they was getting the first uh, two weeks of Rooster was there. But once the uh, revolution um, got hold to him, it was all over with. <laughs> Filthy animals push is so funny. I mean, if you look back on it, it's like talk about being booked to fail. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Terry, we got to get running, okay? Hi right, there. Okay. Let's see, was the old WCW production crew getting a tryout last night? Yeah, we know. Uh, Think about how weird see. it's going to be to watch that first WCW show, and if you know, say there are twenty-four guys on the show from. The Nitro that we watched a couple of weeks ago, but it's like written like a WWF show, and they're cutting promos, and it's formatted the same way. That's going to be creepy. Oh, it's going to be very strange, no matter what. Yeah. Um, just everything about it's going to be different. It's from Derek, who goes, "What do you think about? Do you think Taiyo Kia will be a main eventer in Japan soon? I think he. They have no choice. You know, All Japan doesn't have enough guys. He's going to have to be a main eventer. What are his chances of coming to the WWF? Don't know. Um." If he, I mean, he may be one of those guys who sees, you know, his, you know, all Japan though. Everybody, everybody in all Japan kind of wanted to get out, so I don't know. Uh, if he like made a big push for it, I'm sure they'd give him tryout matches, and he's he's a good enough wrestler that he probably could make it. Um, you know, if he wanted, to, so it's, I think it's probably up to him. Uh, let's see. Do you think that with China holding the women's title, she'll be forced to work harder against people like Molly and Lita? Uh, I don't expect it. Work hard. Uh, or do you think that she'll just squash everyone like Ivory? She'll try to squash him, but I think that when it comes to leaders, she won't be able to. Um, they'll, because there'll be people who... I don't think anyone's going to protect Molly Holly. They just see her as someone they've signed. But Lita, they know they got something with, and they're not going to let China squash Lita, no way. They I don't, didn't even I don't really let her squash Ivory the last time they wrestled. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh... There goes Jeff Hardy being elevated. Triple H did what I expected him to do, but he can't say he put over a young wrestler. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just like Scott Hall always did. Uh, but of course, he ended up killing him afterwards. The crowd heat was horrible until the end of the match when Austin came out. The fans were sitting on their hands, and I c could hear more fans cheer for Hunter than for Jeff. It was so obvious that nobody believed 200 pound if that Jeff could beat 250 pound <laughs> roided up HGH monster. Um, I think Jeff's more than 200. What did you think of it? But not, not I think a lot. he's probably about 215. That's what I was going to guess, too, is 215. And Hunter's probably, two, what do you figure, 260? Yeah. Yeah, he, Hunter's a big cut guy. He is a big uh, man lately. Real big lately, yeah. The crowd I cared more about Austin. looked a little bit bigger, too. How about Kurt Angle, while we're on that subject? Kurt you know Angle what, though, like from a... watching that uh, Kurt Angle video, he is, he is bigger, but he's also put on more fat. Now that he's actually a fat person, but when he first started, he was ripped, and he isn't ripped yeah. anymore. Yeah, but he lo he looks to me like he's close to 240. He's getting, he's, I think he's up to 15 protein shakes a day. <laughs> we'll have to talk to him sometime. Let's see. Uh, the crowd cared more about Austin and Lita than Hunter and Jeff. Uh, no question about that. Um, Austin's the big star. And to top it off, the Undertaker and Kane make the walking save to the Hardys. Isn't the W supposed to be building young stars, not rehashing two-year-old feuds with the same old stars? I can see Triple H being the hell out of Jeff, but they should have at least gotten a DQ or something so Jeff kept, kept the belt at the end. Instead of Austin taunting Lita, he could have put his attention towards the IC belt by helping Hunter beat on Jeff. The Undertaker feud with Austin Triple H is going to take the main events down so much. I swear this was WCW three years ago. Uh, let's see... Last night on the local Eugene, Oregon news station. I would station, say right? it wasn't the same level of incompetence, but then I remembered that they did miss the finish, so it was. Mm, yeah, I don't think it was, it's not as bad. I, don't, I mean, I don't see their future like like I saw WCW's future three years ago. But but that but, particular match, that particular match, that match was, was just like WCW yes. three years ago. Uh, exactly like it was exactly like uh, those old. Maybe not guys the whole going, show and the whole idea and everything, but that particular match. Yes, you're right. 
Last night on the local Eugene, Oregon news station, Roddy Piper was promoting a wrestling show he's going to run at Mac Court at the University of Oregon. He said the Honky Tonk Man, Greg Valentine, Jim Duggan, and Kurt Hennig would be there. He then went on to say he could not, he could get Hogan and Savage, but he is not going to because they will not give their all in the ring and said, I quote, just because you've been on national TV does not make you a great wrestler. Do you know anything about this show? Um, I'm sure about the show. There's your answer right there. What? For Hogan and Savage not appearing. Oh, Hogan and Savage, yeah, that's right, because it's in Oregon. They have to take all those tests. Uh, let's see. In his chat, Vince Russo actually Where's had the audacity. Where's Howard <laughs> That's right. In his chat, Vince Russo actually had the audacity to say he always gave the fans what they wanted. This is from a guy who took the WCW study of what the fans said they wanted and threw it in the garbage. <laughs> I would like to know something about the ratings, Steve Garrison. I understand what they say when they say a 1.1. But when they say a 3.6 share, what do they mean? So it's the share of the audience of the, to the earlier uh, half hour of the show. Yes. So anyway, do that. You know, you think, I was going to send you the whole uh, Vince Russo chat transcript, but I didn't even do it. You would have cried. I didn't even want to read it. I mean, if people sent me like the link to it. I didn't even click on because what's the point? I mean, I you know, uh, let's see this is from Felix. Do you think it's possible Bill Goldberg wait till his contract is out and then do and and during that time train in mixed martial arts and after his contract expires? we we'll go to Japan and fight in Pride or something. I met him last year, and I asked him at No Holds Barred. He was getting offers from Japan and said you'd never know. Personally, I'd like to see him try his hands at MMA rather than go back to wrestling. Bill Goldberg's 34 years old, and when this contract is up, he will be uh, 36 or 37 years old, and that is not the time to start in mixed martial arts. It's just in not. three years from now, the fighters that will be uh, fighting would will be young him. and awesome. Although, although you know, even then, Bill's going to be bigger than most of those guys. But, I mean, Bill, you know, you're talking about... You know, Bill Goldberg, for a guy on the street, is is probably a, a really, really strong, tough guy. But you know, Bill Goldberg never wrestled in college, even. So I mean, you know, he doesn't even have that background to to go back to. He never boxed professionally, and he's going to be going at 37 against these guys who have trained and who are probably trained really hard in wrestling and in kickboxing, because that's what the guys in mixed martial arts are going to be doing. Um, and it's just it's hard. That's the stuff you got to pick up when you're young. And, yeah. you know, he can go do all the kickboxing training he wants now, but without ever having a fight. And he can grapple with wrestlers, but that's not like competing in, like, a college tournament or international tournament like some of these guys have done. Um, you know, he'd have size and strength going for him, but it's just it's it's just too old to start a sport. It really is. Let's start with Chris. Chris, what's going on? How you doing, Dave? Doing pretty good. What's going on? Uh, not too much. Uh, I, I missed the first part of the show. Um so I didn't catch all your nitro thoughts, but uh, there is no nitro. Well, I know raw, what you mean, raw. raw is raw. nitro. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, um, you know, I've been subscribing <laughs> to the Observer for years. I, I I've talked to you a bunch of times here on the phone. I've written you letters. I I used to disagree with you vehemently about Triple H back in the day when you know your <laughs> standing comment was about. You know that he was a good, a good head of hair with the right friends, and um, I've seen how you've, how um, you've changed your tune as far as like you know his his in ring style and everything else. And I've also seen that you know there's been a lot of uh, alluding to his backstage power. And and I, you know, I, I think last night, I, I mean, any people would have to be blind to think that it was going to go any other way than what it did. Um, I. I, I but that's an indictment. That's, of that's an scores. indictment of the system. To think huh? that if you th that's an indictment of the system saying that. Well, you know that. <laughs> I, I mean, it's. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I look at everything that goes on, and uh, you know, the rocks out, so it's a perfect time for Jericho and, and Benoit and Angle to move up and everything, and that's not happening. They're all stuck in the mid card, probably in a tag team match against each other with Regal. Um, at the next pay per view, while you got Undertaker and Kane, you know nothing that you haven't said. But um, I've got a couple of points. Number one, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, you know, here's Triple H contending for the IC title, and he's he uh, basically made Austin his bitch last night. You know, he's telling Austin what to do, browbeating him about his wife's interference and everything else. Yes, he did. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, he's so he's so clever. Those little things. Yeah, and 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 uh, and. You know, I know at the end Austin came out. It was probably a ruse and, you know, the whole bit. But but still, you know, the the impression was that here's the guy who supposedly was demoted to the IC ranks, and he's still basically running the show, you know. He's and, the one uh, who's running the show, exactly. And, and Steve, he, Steve Austin has become the guy who Vince McMahon and Hunter tell what to do. Right. The evil henchman. Right. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it, 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 I, I wouldn't be surprised if next week Austin was getting uh, getting Triple H coffee at the same time that Trish is getting <laughs> Steph coffee. 
<laughs> and uh, it, the other thing is that, okay, I don't think anyone can say that there's, there's not some undue influence going on. And maybe with the XFL and the acquisition of WCW and everything, maybe it's uh, maybe it's understandable. But, I mean, do you see that, do, do, what do you see happening with this whole situation? Do you think it's going to get as bad as 95 when Vince actually had to fly out to house shows and kind of settle the troops? Or, I mean, no, you, no, 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 because then... Hunter is so much more subtle about it. Uh-huh. Yeah, and also, and also, if any group got power like that now, Vince would Vince would nix anyone, including Hunter, if it if it got out of control. I mean, because I mean, the fact that the things that, that that tell you that is one, the fact that he's not going to make any um, what's the word, any bending of the system to sign a Bill Goldberg who's guaranteed huge money pay per view main events for him because he doesn't want to. He he he's got everything under control. He will not let this thing get out of control. If anyone. But that's like the whole thing that people bring up like unions now. Anyone who starts a union now, Vince will drop them in a heartbeat. Vince is in full control. And Hunter works with Vince. He doesn't work against Vince. They, they, you know, he's got Vince's ear. Right. But, I, um, I understand all go, that. But when does Vince yeah. come to the realization? I mean, for a while, okay, I could see it. For a while, I was enjoying the fact that a heel was going over every month on pay-per-views. I mean, to me, I was looking at it back six months ago that Triple H was kind of like, the, I think I even said this to you one of the times I called in the show, that Triple H was a was a combination, he was like Ric Flair in Hulk Hogan's body, you know, he's, but now it's more like he's, you know, I mean, he's the great wrestler, but he, he's he's picked up the politics end of it, too, and, and it doesn't seem like, you know, what's going on now doesn't seem to me, judging by the way the ratings are, are, uh, are and everything, I mean, I understand other facets of the business are still strong, but the fact is, with no competition and everything, and, and that, you know, really, they have a chance here to do something with the rock out, and uh, they're not doing it. And so when does yep. Vince wake up and realize that, you know, this thing is it could be going better? Maybe it's not a disaster yet, but it could be going a lot better. Well, again, you got to so remember when Vince... Vince comes in for the next pay-per-view and it's very low, he might decide that some changes need to be made. But it's just that whole thing, that, like in WCW, when things were strong, there were mistakes being made everywhere, but business was still strong, so everyone just ignored them like they weren't mistakes. Yeah. Well, here's the other, here's the other one, too. You got to remember, if you look at Vince's history, when things get bad, what does Vince do? He immediately goes to the big guys. So, I mean, his reaction would be to push Undertaker. It's like, and and to, and to find, you know, like some, you know, Sid Vicious kind of a guy, or to to, to put in there. I mean, Vin, Vince's reaction when things are going good has never been to push guys who are five foot ten. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, when Vince is going bad, I mean, you could see it even like in '97 when Brett and Shawn were obviously destined for that WrestleMania. And, of course, Sean screwed that up. But the point is that Sean screwed that up because Vince had made the call to go with Undertaker and Sid as the main event and not Brett and Sean, and Sean then bailed. Yeah. And, you know, let's, let's, let's think about it. Like, what in, in early 1997, which match was stronger, Brett against Sean that people had waited a year to see, or, or Undertaker and Sid, which clearly nobody wanted to see? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the only other thing I see is that I, I see all kinds of things on the net and whatever, and I think you might have alluded to it, too, about how the Hotties might be and end up in WCW and it might be a good spot for them. And, uh, the, the, what, Not what after the, last night. What the, well, <laughs> that, exactly. What the apologists are saying is that, well, this whole thing was to build up the Hotties, but, but then you get the same WCW no, mentality. Not, not last, you, you, can't, you, can't, you, you, you can't argue that la after last night. Yeah, because, because they, I mean, they, you've got a guy not, who wasn't good enough. For the WWF going to WCW and becoming a hero, I mean, is that not exactly even competitive to a, a guy who's not even competitive with the top guys. I mean, if he was competitive and almost won, I wouldn't have minded it as much as like not like like you know he was he was portrayed as a joke against the main right. event. I mean, if anything, I mean, the, I, the whole I, thing I, when you look at that show last night is they had the uh, they had the tag title match with the Hollies. And there was a point in that match where the fans actually believed that the hardcore Hollies were going to win the tag team titles. And there was not one single point in that Jeff Hardy match where anybody in the entire arena thought for even one instant that Jeff had a prayer. Not one spot. I thought, was, I, I thought with a belt shot he did, actually. I didn't but... even think that because, you know, Hunter was out of the ring and just took a bump over the announce table. Yeah. Yeah. If he would have hit him with the belt like in the middle of the ring and went right for the cover, I might have believed it. But, but the that fact goes, it was the way it was done, said, I didn't even believe it. That goes back to what Dave said, though, because Triple H was portrayed as the face last night. I mean, you know, he well, beat, well he, he was he was a smart guy, he was the better guy, so yeah, that makes him yeah, that basically makes him the face and what and you know, and he was the manipulator. Yeah. 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 And he was right. When all of a sudden when all of a sudden done everything he said was right. You know, like when you brag and it comes true, today that makes you a face. Right. Yeah. The whole thing yeah. just told Austin, just trust me. And he was right. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
Um, great show. Newsletter's awesome, Dave. And, uh, well, ho- hopefully we'll have something to talk about two years from now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I just, I just, I, I'm unfortunately, I'm becoming like, uh, I'm becoming like WWF and I worry week, and I'm just worried about week to week. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, let's go to Chris in Long Island. Chris, what's up? Hello, Dave. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Nothing much. I wanted to ask, what's, what's the, the thing, what's going on with, uh, Shawn Michaels? Not at WrestleMania, then not off TV, not on TV. What's going on? Um, he was brought in for the TVs before WrestleMania, and, uh... Was he, he was really out of shape? I mean, that's what I heard. No, nah, he was not physically out of, of shape. shape. He, was, oh. he, was me- he was not, he was mentally out of shape. They were afraid to put him on television and told him to go home. He is that and big of an ego backstage? Uh, that was a little bit of a problem, but that was not the under, that was not the big problem either. Oh. But it was, it was a little bit of the problem. It was more, you know, I mean, I don't know, again, I wasn't back there. Yeah. I don't know what he did, but, um, they just felt that, you know, I don't know, it was, I don't know if he was drunk. I don't know what he was, but they were afraid to put him on television. Wow, that, that's sad. He could have, what a change that would have been for the product on TV and having the same guys go at it week after week. But we don't know with Sean. You know, you just don't know because he may have done one match and not have been able to get out of bed for a month. Yeah, that's I mean, true. He's got, a really, situation. he's got a really bad back. I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure he would have given us a hell of one match after that. Yeah, that's for sure. After that, yeah, you're right. This future would be questionable. Yeah, you just, you just don't, you just don't know what his body can take. Yeah, that's I for mean, sure. What else knows what would have happened the weekend before the match with Hunter? Because you know those two <laughs> together, both playing their little games. You know who's going to yeah. take that match? We'll be on top. That's right. And the thing, the thing about this, you know, like, there's, that's real big egos there when you're talking about Sean and Hunter. Yeah, because even though the, even though they've been friends in the past, you've got Sean, who still I'm sure to this day thinks of Hunter as the guy who's you know his understudy. Yeah, you know, he, he, he made helped. his career basically. I feel right, right, and he did. As he did, yeah. Hunter, you know, Hunter, Hunter made his you know his big leap because he stood next to Sean, who was so incredible at that time. Yeah, of course. But now Hunter is like surpassed Sean, and Sean, I mean, to Hunter, it's like. You know, Sean's this guy from four years ago. I'm today. You know, why should I job for him? That would be a real difficult uh, match to work out. That's sad that he doesn't realize that. I mean, the guy made his career in DX. No, no, no question about it. Yeah. What, 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 what do you see like uh, Tommy Dreamer or any of the other ECW stars without a contract ever showing up in WWF or WCW? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I, I expect they'll hire Dreamer. I don't know what for what spot. Um. You know, that's all the stuff that they're going to be working out probably the next month. Yeah, what about, uh, you only see Paul Heyman pushing all the ECW guys on, uh, on Raw, pushing Rhino, it's ridiculous. I think Rhino should be off TV and get a whole new gimmick. The guy, the guy would be unstoppable with the right gimmick. His gimmick right now is going to end him up nowhere in six months. Yeah. I don't think the gimmick has so much to do with it, which is how he's portrayed. Portrayed, yeah, he's portrayed. That, that kind of gimmick is going to get, is going to be over in the meantime, but then I don't know how long that's going to last. I don't know. I mean, it's like, I mean, Paul, Paul likes him and likes that gimmick, and I think that a lot of his future is being booked by Paul. I really do. Uh, that's a good idea. That, I mean, he has the right man booking it for him. Yeah. What about Mark Henry? Is he is he liking the plans? You think for the WWF to bring back anytime soon, or he, he shouldn't be, but he probably is just because they're paying him so much. I think they got to justify it. But uh, I mean, I watch Ohio Valley all the time, and and I mean, there's 15 guys there that are better than Mark Henry. Really? You know, I'm how does he look? Really. <laughs> oh, he's in great condition. Wow. He's probably 320 pounds. I mean, he's, you know, I mean, he's probably lost 80 pounds since he's been wow. there. I'm, um, his work is much better, but I mean, if you compare him to everybody else there, I mean, yeah, there true. are guys there that are really good, and he's wow. not. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> what about, you think they should ship Big Show back down there? After what he did, what he said last night. Night. That's, that's ridiculous. I mean, well, if he really said what, what, but he may not have said it, so I, I don't know. Yeah, that's he, true. I mean, a couple yeah. of years back, Jerry Waller made a comment about Tiger Ali Singh with uh, the with the ragheads. I believe it was on uh, on Raw's War a couple of years back, and that was pretty bad. But this is, I don't know. Last night, if that's what he said, he went way too far. Um, if he did say that, that was really stupid. Um. As far as, I mean, I think he should be sent back. Personally, to me, I mean, it's okay. I guess he, it's okay he's doing the comedy thing. But, I mean, for them, as far as an example, they never should have brought him back. Yeah, he's, all, he's his, his skills really, he stinks. Well, it's not that he stinks. It's more the conditioning he's, thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, Ross said they're going to do weigh-ins for the entire roster. <laughs> and, you know, you can say whatever you want, but if you do the weigh-in and someone, you know, fails, they weigh too much, you need to make an example of them. 
And, I mean, you can't do something like send D'Lo Brown there who wasn't on TV anyway and keep Big Show. Yeah. I mean, if Big Show, you know, if, if he's too heavy, you need to send him down there again. Yeah, he still gets a huge pop. I mean, it's ridiculous, but he's way too over. they got to do something with this whole gimmick. It's horrible. Well, I mean, I think what they're doing is is they're they're punishing him because, you know, he's not in shape, and they're not going to yeah. give him a top spot unless he gets in shape. And he's obviously, you know, I saw him, you know, I watched him last night. I mean, he was, he looked in worse shape. I mean, when he took that, when he was walking around with that shirt off, he <laughs> thought he was like, like giant Rikishi almost. He, he almost looks as bad as when he used to come out with the cigarettes on Nitro. Almost, yeah, almost. Not quite. <laughs> wait, 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 let me get through a couple of these emails. Why is it so imperative for Triple H to put wrestlers over? That's a loaded question. For the future. From listening to both you and Brian, when we get the impression he's the only one who should do it or isn't doing it. What about Austin? Uh, haven't seen the situation where Austin should have done it in specific. The Rock, who has Rock has done it many, many times. How many? You know, Rock's lost more has lost more matches than anyone as far as television, as far as to guys who are considered quote not at his level. Undertaker, which we've Big commented boss, on many man. times. Uh, Undertaker, Undertaker on in the Kurt Angle thing. There was no excuse for that when that happened too. And Kane, which is a um, similar situation, although Kane put over Jericho, but it didn't elevate Jericho either. So, um, that, you know, they're, they're, I mean, I mean Kane's the kind of a guy where if, if he's with Undertaker, he's kind of perceived as being at the top level. But if he's not, then he's not considered to be. You know, I, when I saw him do the match with Jericho and Jericho won, it's like, okay, great, he beat Kane. I didn't consider Kane like a top guy. They do, though. I mean, I agree with you. I don't either. But but they they do you know part so it's of like the whole mentality of, of what they think and what fans think it's the whole big guy thing I mean like I said I didn't consider you know Big Show as a top guy when the Hardys beat him I don't consider Kane I mean just because they're big it's the whole airport thing who cares yeah you're right about you're right about that no I mean the, the problem isn't specifically Triple H the problem is specifically WWF not creating new stars and you have to create new stars for their future and I mean you know and if you don't I mean just look at the um what are the, the tombstones of dead wrestling promotions, and you'll realize that one of the most common mistakes was is going with the pat hand too long. And even promotions that are not doomed, that are not dead, but like, say, all, like an All Japan or All Japan Women, which is a perfect example of the inability to create new stars, and you, don't, and you lose so much of your former popularity, and even though you're still alive, you know, you're certainly not what you once were. And if you look at, uh, you know, any of these companies in wrestling, um, Three years, two years is, an, is a lifetime in wrestling, and you could be the hottest company in the world, WCW 1998, and you can be, you know, even if not out of business, um, your fortunes can tur totally turn around so quickly in this business, you know, both good and bad. You can, you can go up in a hurry, and you can go down in a hurry, and when you're on top, if you don't realize that you can go down in a hurry and you're not preparing for the future and just resting on your laurels in this, in this industry, uh, you will be in trouble. At some point, uh, let's see. Uh, what else do we have here? What do you think about Edge and Christian going to WCW as a tag team, breaking up and becoming main eventers? No, I don't know. Depends on how it's done. What about Goldberg, Edge, Booker T, Sean O'Hare, and Christian as WCW's main eventers? Uh, I don't know how many times we have to talk about Bill Goldberg, but he's very, very unlikely going to be Apparently there. Apparently, he signed within about the past ten minutes. Yeah. As far as Sean O'Hare, he's not ready. Although you, you know, he everyone's high on Sean O'Hare, and 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 rightfully so. Uh, but don't you know he shouldn't be rushed either. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. In a way, the CRTC is wrong about the TSN advisory and warning for Raw's War every Monday. At the beginning of the show and before they come back from each and every commercial break, an advisory comes up which says, Warning, the following program contains material that may offend some viewers' discretion is advised. Do they think that that is not a strong enough warning? I guess at that show that was talked about, they didn't have that warning up. Um, so I guess they have to put that warning up. Uh, here's what should have happened at the end of Raw. Leader rushes to the aid of Matt, leading Jeff all alone. Uh, Austin distracts the ref. Hunter wins by a cheap shot over Jeff. Austin comes in and Triple H and him beat up Jeff with no Matt and Lita there to help. Actually, I kind of thought that that's where they were going in a sense, too. Here comes Undertaker and Kane. It sets up the tension with the Hardy Boys and the main event uh, for, for the pay-per-view. If Austin and Triple H are Flair and R and then the Hardys are the Rock and Roll Express, does that make Undertaker and Kane Dusty and Nikita? If so, did we miss a bunch of cool Great American Bash main events in between point A and point B? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Are they going to put Raven in a feud with Eddie Guerrero for the European title? Uh, kind of what I was expecting where they were going for the next pay-per-view when I saw that pinfall, yes. Uh, let me see. 
Uh, Especially like that for a finish, too. I was just amazed he hits the DDT and everyone went crazy, and he got the pin. Yeah, well, there's something I different. I didn't expect that. Uh, uh, let's see. You should seriously consider putting 10 to 30 minute responses on Yada for these questions. How do the ratings work? When is ECW coming back? What did Vince do to screw Brett? Why did WCW fold? What was wrong with Vince Russo? <laughs> yeah, we should just Goldberg coming in. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, here's Chad's something on... back wrestling. Uh, yeah. Uh, here's more information on Prince Justice. He started wrestling in southwestern Ohio and northern Kentucky for Northern Wrestling Federation before going to Memphis. He stands about 6'4". He weighs between 350 and 380. He can be a good worker. He's had great matches with Chris Harris in the Indies. His best asset is his talking. If given mic time, he can cut a great heel promo. Just thought I'd pass this information along. Okay, let's go to uh, Dennis in Missouri. Dennis, what's going on? Hey, guys, how you doing? Uh, we're doing really good. Hey, um, first of all, for a couple of people who uh, emailed in earlier about Ted Turner, there was a big article on the uh, <clears throat> Internet today that basically said that Ted Turner, you know, would never have the opportunity or could never start a uh, another cable network unless he bought out Time Warner himself. That doesn't sound good. See, so he's, got non, he's, he's got a non-compete. So he's yeah, there's, there's a non-compete clause. There's no way that they would ever allow him to leave so, Time Warner and start his work because he could, but, you know, build it up so fast. But he could, um, he could buy a broadcast network, right? He could still buy NBC. I think now, he, so. I'm not even sure about that. That'd be interesting though, because if he bought NBC, would that mean he would get CNBC and MSNBC? That's so. Maybe he couldn't. I don't know. I don't think he could, Dave, because um, my understanding is his. His deal with Time Warner is basically just kind of a figurehead type type setup, and I don't he doesn't have a lot of control. And I think if he left Time Warner, I don't think he could buy um, NBC. I think they would still consider that as competition because um, you know of the fact that they do own CNN and other stuff. But I, I don't think they would allow him to to do that. Hmm. Hmm. Because the uh, article said that one of the things, and I have no idea whether this is true, it has nothing to do with anything, but that he um, he finally came to that realization and was even contemplating suicide for a while. Yeah, I read that. Oh, God. So, you know, wow. it, it finally hit him because everybody said, you know, when he signed that deal, eventually he's going to come to the realization that he has no power anymore and that's going to be hard for him to take. I bet. I bet, it, I bet, it's, I bet it's killing him. Especially when he sees his friends and people he's, you know, brought from the start, you know, um, getting axed. And also, you know, basically his life work is going to hell because they're gutting CNN. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, CNN is really what put him on the map along with these other stations. Uh, but I mean, CNN was like the one that was like world, you know, worldwide. And, you know, you know, it's losing the Fox News Network now in the States. And they're, they're cutting the staff up. And now all they care about is making profit. And when Ted Turner, you know, put the thing on the map, I mean, it wasn't about... It wasn't about making a profit. It was about building, you know, the number one news organization right. in the world. Right. Um, I also wanted to ask, I, I kept thinking, watching Raw last night, um, it almost looked like Vince was coasting, you know? Because I, I had always heard that after <laughs> WrestleMania, there's kind of a letdown. And it almost looked like Vince just kind of said, okay, we got a two-hour show to do. Let's throw it together. i got XFL to worry about. I, I liked. I mean, I liked the show. I was, if, it, if they'd had a better finish for the main event, I would have said it was an awesome show. I thought, I thought, a, I thought the wrestling was good, but I didn't think the over. Some of the, like the, I couldn't figure out why. Um, why they even bothered sticking Deborah out there? I think they just figured they have to do something with her. That's the only thing I, that I, don't why. I, don't, I don't see. I don't see any role in the WWF that I think that she would do well. But I think that they the got to do something. I, I think it's a surrogate for something they're going to do with women. You know, I and that, that kind of leads me to what I was going to ask next. The guy that uh, sent an email asking, uh, you know, about trying to squash the other woman. I kind of got the feeling maybe at WrestleMania that the reason they gave her the titles because they don't intend to ever defend it again. No, no they, 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 did give, they did. They did. Yeah, they already defended. But the, the reason I think one of the reasons they gave her the title was to make it clear that they're not going to have her um, beating men in the ring anymore. Mm -hmm. But what's I think the those days are over. There's no, there's no female in the WWF that can, she, she can even have a compelling match with that the fans would go for. Yeah, uh, you're right. Maybe, maybe, well, maybe, maybe they'll turn her heel on Lita before, you know, uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know, as a way to get Lita over. Yeah. Although China won't probably, China probably won't be very good at, in that role either. That's what I was about to say. I don't think she would put Lita over. I think <laughs> that would be worse well, than Triple H. Well, it would be one of those things where she doesn't want to do this for Lita, so she'll purposely be like this horrible heel. 
But if she does that, they'll get rid. They'll get rid of her because she doesn't have any political stroke anymore. She did. She did for a long time. That's why she. But but now she doesn't. And uh, because of that, um, she won't get. She, it, those people are. You know, they're not going to delude themselves in a China Lita match where China just kills her and beats her like uh, somehow or other people thought. Oh, you know, Hunter did a great job selling last night for Jeff. Well, you know, they have to be careful. She she can show up in XPW and throw the belt in the trash can. <laughs> hey, great! I'm all for it. Yeah, but I I thought China was undergoing uh, or not undergoing is the right word, but I thought they were having contract <laughs> negotiations and that wasn't going well. Is that was that resolved? Um, all I know is that they haven't signed a new contract, but her contract's got you know probably a good six months to go. Oh, okay. But uh, they they might very well be working on it though. But um, you know, as far as like contract running out, um, you know, I think it's at the end of the year. Hey, I wanted to ask real quick. I've got the. Uh, I've got. I thought I had the complete set of wrestling gold tapes, but um, the first DVD uh, when you had the match list this weekend, I don't have any of those matches. I thought I had the complete set. There, there was like an hour and fifteen minutes of new footage that. Okay, they you know they released it twelve years ago or whatever. Right. The wrestling gold. There's like an hour and twenty minutes of stuff, mostly from San Antonio, that we voiced over that was not on the original okay. collection, and then and then the rest of it is the original collection. Yeah, because I don't have like Sweet Hand or any of that. Oh, thank God. <laughs> All oh, that Bob Sweet Hand stuff. On oh, that Bob Sweet Hand stuff. Oh, I couldn't believe that was like the last, like one of the last three matches we did, and it's like this twenty-minute match. And oh, God. well, you know the weird thing is, growing up, he he wrestled a lot in the Central States area. So yeah, when yeah, I was he was a star there. I used to think he was a really good wrestler, but <laughs> now when you look at him, it's the same way for a lot of those guys. You look at him, and you're, man, they weren't really good workers. Oh, Bob Sweet Hand. I was like, God damn, he did nothing. And he booked himself to be the top baby face in the territory. No wonder that territory. You know, what's funny is like people would like in, in that San Antonio territory. You know, the, it was on USA Network before WWF was. Right. Um, the WWF got their slot. And I remember people going, "Oh, that great feud with Bob Sweetan and, and Tully Blanchard." And I remember in that time they didn't draw flies because you know Bob Sweetan was the booker. He kept himself strong. Tully, you know, Tully's was was one of those heels that was great at making a lazy fat guy into a you know look okay, which which is why you know Dusty always pushed him so so strong. And, you know, when you look, when, when you know, it's like, the you know, at least Dusty had a zillion dollars worth of charisma. Bob Sweetan had nothing as a baby face. And that territory went to nothing because this booker just pushed himself because, you know, and people thought it was like some great thing, you know, because they didn't, they didn't go to the house shows, I guess. Well, you know, I got to get this, I got to get, and I, I got, have to get a DVD player first, but I got to get this complete set just to hear Cornette do the voiceovers for the wrestling bear match. That must have been fine. <laughs> Oh my God! Just that, that was the worst that match was I've ever seen in my life. Oh, that was so yeah, that was bad. Hey, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad matches on there. Some good and some good ones too. Yeah, there are some really good matches, but it was, it was weird because some of the matches they put on there, I'm like, you're not really showcasing these guys. You know, we never really saw the Sheik very much, and the match they put on there with Kerry Von Erich and David Von Erich was a horrible match. Oh, that was what Kerry was so bad then. Yeah, it was with Gene Yates and Killer Carl Krupp. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't there was nobody there. It was just yeah. a horrible match. But I would really, you know, for those that are just learning about wrestling, I mean, there are some good matches on there. You really gain respect from Lawler for uh, from watching that, and um, Savage as well. You ever well, watch the, the thing... Golden Age show on ESPN Classics? Yeah, I, I, I don't some watch. Of those. Uh, most of those are older, though, aren't they? I mean, Much older. I'm just wondering when when the show airs. I had like a tape of it this weekend, but it was only like an hour tape, and I heard it was like a two-hour show. It used show. to air at like eight o'clock Central Time on Sunday mo or Saturday morning. Okay. But most of those were like from the '60s and '70s. They did show one week. They showed um Southwest Championship Wrestling, but most of those were from like the golden age of wrestling. Mm hmm But they, I'm sure they moved it since then. But okay. But they had like Haystacks Calhoun and Sky High Lee and guys yeah, like I just that. Watched him. Sky High Lee. That was um Billy Graham's um. God, he's related to Billy Graham in some form. Billy Graham's wife's like uncle or something. Yeah, and it was like weird because they always had, and I didn't, they always had midgets that would coincide with, like there was the Little Dick the Bruiser, and I think he's on Wrestling Gold, but there was Skylar. Yeah, yeah, Little and, Bruiser and, uh, and, and, uh, and um, some, uh, somebody against uh, the Black Jackson Bobby Heenan probably. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was Little Bruiser, Dick the Bruiser, and I want to say like the Crusher or somebody. It might have been the Crusher, it might have been, Bru yeah, it might have been somebody else. Sailor R. Thomas maybe. But it was best two out of three falls, and he showed the first fall. Oh, okay. Cornette, Cornette renewed that match real well. Cause I'll tell you what, on, on those tapes, 
um, you know, as far as like if you've never if you if you never saw old wrestling, not only is it interesting to see the tapes to see old wrestling, but with Cornette you get so much knowledge. In, yeah. In like, I mean, you, you're just be amazed. I I learned so much um, from Cornette. You know, just about that that time frame and. You know, it, it was almost like he was giving these guys, because he was so used to the Ohio Valley thing, he was so giving these guys these speeches on psychology. Like, it, oh, this whole tape, this, this whole thing is going to be some speech on why Jerry Lawler is so great and the psychology <laughs> of wrestling in the 80s. And I just, I'm, I'm listening to him do this, and I go, oh, my God, these guys in Ohio Valley, they got to hear this every day. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's just that, like, you know, I mean, it, it's real interesting. I'll tell you what was cool, because I pulled him out this weekend watching a, uh, uh, Savage power drive um, Morton through the table, which is no big deal now, but to see the way that the crowd reacted to it and the way the announcers reacted to it, because they'd never seen it before. They'd never seen anything like that before. I never saw anything like it when I saw it that time, too, in, in 84 or whatever, 80, 84, 85, when that happened. I think it was 84, actually. Yeah, I know that it was... WWF had just come to uh, Memphis either the night before or the night after, and so Jarrett put on this mega card... And everybody was told to just work their ass off because they had to put on a better card than the WWF, which which they did by far. But you know, <laughs> ten years later, it didn't matter. WWF still won the war. But yeah, it, and you also gain a really big respect if you watch the original announcers uh, for Lance Russell. He could put over anybody. Oh, he's great. He was great. Most, and uh, you know what else? When you watch, the, when you hear the other announcers, most of the other announcers are horrible. Yeah, the guy from Southwest Championship Wrestling is horrible. My, my God, he's awful. S Steve Stack. He was actually better than most. But, yeah, Lance was just like... Uh, Lance Russell, when you watch the old tapes, Lance Russell and Gordon Soley were really, really good, and most of the wrestling announcers around the country in that era were not. I think the worst announcer was the guy that was doing the uh, Sheik and uh, um, Tom Jones match. Yeah, he was bad. They had a guy in, um, I'm thinking Chattanooga or Knoxville, named Harry Thornton, I think was his name. I could be wrong on the name, but he was the worst announcer I ever saw. Or maybe Knoxville. <laughs> I, uh, it was Joe Kazana's father. Joey Kazana's father was the promoter at the time. And he had this announcer who was, uh, i never seen anything. I mean, he made Ed Whalen look like the greatest announcer of all time. Actually, Randy Hales was probably the worst. I have to... Mm, nah, not compared to this guy's, like, <laughs> Ten leagues below that. You got, it's Man, not, it's because not. Randy Hills is doing the Terry Taylor match. Man, that's awful. Yeah. We're going to have Randy on the show soon, so. I mean, he's, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he just shouldn't be announcing. Yeah. Anyway, we got okay. to go. A lot of guys like that. Yeah, yeah, we probably would be too. Uh, let's go to Yale and Long Island. Yale, what's up? <laughs> hey, how are you? Doing really good. Hey. Um, question. I was wondering if. Um, we're ever going to see the end to the Triple H, Kurt Angle, Stephanie Love Triangle storyline. <laughs> I thought that was the coolest angle last year. It was the coolest it angle was. until it was killed. Yeah, until we ever going to see figure out a way to get out of it. It was kind of like there was so. this common sense ending of it, which is similar to the common sense ending of last night's match, and somehow common sense did not prevail on either occasion. No, no, because Lee Hunter was involved with both. Just yeah, coincidentally. Because then, like, they had uh, Hunter in a feud with Benoit, and it's like the angle was just forgotten. It was the hottest going angle, like, last year, you know? I think Kurt well, Angle still thinks that someday it will be resolved. <laughs> 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 he's, still waiting, he's still waiting to get the girl at the end, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, he is. And yeah, Hunter and Stephanie, it's like, they're, they're, so they're both trying to sit there figuring out, how do I dump the other one and get rid of this stupid marriage thing? <laughs> No, because I honestly don't see Hunter's and Stephanie's marriage going on for, like, too much longer. They've been together for, like, what, over, like, a year now, so, you know. A year and a half. will actually go on forever, and uh, they'll be married in real life, and yeah. Hunter will own the company and get the last <laughs> laugh over even Vince McMahon. Uh, <laughs> he'll, be the one, he'll be the one who gets Vince out of power, right? And, and he'll yep, manipulate he will be the one. If anybody he'll is the like Shane, Shane will be out working in the coal mines, right? <laughs> hey, he will. <laughs> Uh, Hunter will charge Shane that uh, hundred thousand for WCW or the million, <laughs> and insist on payments. <laughs> All right, we we're totally out of time. I want to thank everyone for joining in. Thank everyone for emailing you. I'm sorry we didn't get to all the emails. Tomorrow we're going to have Bruno San Martino here, so we'll see everybody tomorrow at five.